You got it locked on Rhodium Radio. Due to circumstances beyond anyone's control, Dr. Dre is in a motherfucking house. So right about now, and I say, Yo, Steve, are you with me? I C E, are you with me? Here's a little something about a nigga like me that never should have let me buy tape from Steve. Ice Cube would like to play in dope shit mixed by Dr. Dre. Since I was a youth. I like concert, now I like a motherfucking rodeo Buying a tape or two, that's what the hell I do You don't like Tony A, well fuck you, this is a game And I'm in it, I Cube will fuck you up in a minute With a right, left, right, making you sick And then you see Tony A is on the mix Tony A! Welcome back, everyone, to Rodium Radio, episode 259. And uh, I got to give a quick shout out, okay? Uh, I have some churros right here that we're grubbing on. And the name of the person or the name of the company that's doing this is called Comadres underscore E underscore Mas. Comadres y Mas. Uh, well, it's not E, pero it's a Y. Comadres underscore Y underscore Mas. M-A-S. Comadres y Mas. They're the ones that came over and they blessed us with some churros. So I put cajeta and, and some lechera on there. And uh, my guests are grubbing on some too. So I wanted to give them a quick shout out on that. And then I got one special announcement that I'm going to make. Uh, this Saturday, it's going to be a must-see. I will be live with uh, American Cholo this Saturday at 6 p.m. Uh, it's time to clear the air. Uh, there's some things, there's some topics that I'm going to be talking about that are very necessary for me to talk about. A lot of questions that people have been asking me about uh, a certain individual that came against me with uh, false allegations. Uh, all of that was taken care of already. It was taken care of yesterday, actually. So uh, let's just say that the victory was mine. And I want to thank everybody who supported me. But it's time for me to share everything that actually happened and that went on. But I'm going to share it with paperwork, okay? And uh, I was given uh, the right by the judge and the attorney to share everything that was uh, said. And uh, it's time for me to really expose the lies of people that try to come against me. I'll be talking about that. And I'll also be talking about uh, people have asked me, whatever happened to John Elkins? You're going to find out. People have asked me, you know what, is there a thing between you and Melo? People are going to find out. So there's going, to be, there's going to be a lot of things that I'm going to touch on. I think it's very important for you guys to go subscribe to American Cholo Podcast or just tune in. But I'll be posting and promoting it starting tomorrow. Uh, you're not going to want to miss this. And I think it's very important for us as Latinos that if we plan to move forward and come together, uh, you know, as and unifying and, and let there be unity amongst our raza, we need to expose those honestly that are causing trouble or causing strife amongst us. And I think it's about time. You know, you, you, you can't, uh, how, how does that saying go? Uh, how can two walk together unless they are agreed? And there's a lot of people out there that I need to speak on and touch on if we ever want to come together as one. So once again, I want to thank Rasa. I want to thank all you subscribers. I want to thank all my followers that have supported me, that have been there for me since day one, that have believed in me. Uh, I'm still here, but I will address everything on Saturday uh, 6 p.m. And if you have any questions, you could DM me the questions and I'll answer them. Okay. Other than that, you know what? I got a very special, I got two special guests tonight. One of them actually has a lot, a lot of history and I'm very thankful that he's here. And another one, you'll be seeing him soon. He'll be performing at a concert along with Ice T, but I'll let them uh, um, tell you guys about it. So without further ado, please allow me to introduce Henji and Namek. How you doing, brother? What's up? I'm Hen G. What's up, Tony? Yeah, it's a pleasure. Hey, man, you know what? No, it's my pleasure, brother, to have you here, you know? And my pleasure to have Namik here. Now, am I, am I pronouncing it right? Because I hear people say Namik, Namik. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's Namik like dynamic, brother. Okay, okay. Because yes, people was like, you're going to have Namik? And I'm like, maybe I'm saying it wrong. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's kind of like the, the Razz-Cast, raz type of thing. People get it right, people get it wrong. It is what it is. Yeah. Right. You know. That's good. That's good, man. So how you guys doing? You guys good? We just chilling, man. You know, thank God the freeways wasn't packed one ten. Usually it's packed at this time of the day. Yes, yes, good. yes. Exactly. <laughs> now, uh, uh, really quick, because I'm a huge basketball fan. Mm -hmm. I know we we're all Laker fans, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. You guys been paying attention to the Golden State and Boston yes, game? Yeah, somewhat. Okay. Who are you pulling for, if any? Um. Um. West Coast. Okay. Yeah. I'm the opposite on this one, man. It's crazy because I'm a Laker fan to the death, but for some reason, man, I just – I ain't trying to see Golden State win this year, homie. You know, plus, plus, plus Tatum is, is kind of like a Kobe Jr., and he respects Kobe like that, so I, I got to give that respect back. Okay. Respect okay. I like Steph Curry. That guy is just insane. Yeah, yeah. He's a monster. True. Yeah, so I like him, and there's another kid on there named Jordan Poole. I, I think he's great too, but, uh, you know, you, you know how I compare – Golden State. Do you remember when Kurt Warner was playing for the Rams when he they were in St. Louis? They were considered the greatest show on turf. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. I think these guys are like equivalent to the greatest show on the basketball court. I yeah, guess because yeah, yeah. they be throwing fucking those threes from half from court. Half court, yeah, like some Harlem Globetrotter court. shit. Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, but before we continue, I want to give a shout out to Erica. We have a mutual friend, and Erica, yeah, yeah. Erica from B and B Entertainment. Thank you uh, 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 for you know plugging us all in. So thank you, Erica. Yes. Yeah. And I know there's people, maybe of this generation, that may not know. And the reason why I think uh, uh, these interviews are important is because I can say you were there from the very beginning. When I say the very beginning, very beginning of hip hop, yes. okay? Some but, people may not know who you are, especially from this generation. So I think it's important uh, if I ask you, who is Henry? I'm a, my family's from Honduras. I was born in um, Brooklyn, New York. My brother, who's Ice T's DJ, DJ Evil Lee, we were relocated in our teen years to the West Coast, Cudahy, California, to be exact. And um, from there, you know, we just basically dominated the Latino community. Cypress Hill was on the other side, Southgate. You see, we see Melo and his brother Sin Dog. They used to come by, um, and. Um, we met up with Ice T once we um, did, you know, rock the com Latino community. We kind of introduced hip hop over there, the East Coast hip hop. So we went to meet Ice T. When we met him, Ice came over to our crib in Cudahy, and he started rhyming. And he asked us how he sound. We said, "You sound like a pimp and a player." Then we said, "We sound like those guys that rock the house." So we put that together, and then from then to now, we're still on world tours. In wow. the middle of all that, um, I was a K Day mix master back in the days with Tony G, Jammin' Gemini, and Joe Cooley yeah. on 1580, the original K Day. And from then, um, Colors got hot. Um, after Colors, we went on a world tour. We was the first group to really, from the West Coast, to go on tour with East Coast groups like Eric B and Rock Cam, Public Enemy, um, Big Daddy Kane, Biz Marquee. We shared the same bus, rest in peace. So. From there to now, I kind of stayed low key and did the business side. After my group, of course, I had called the Latin Froze, Los Latinos Africanos. We made a couple of, a little bit of noise in, um, I think, late 90s. You know, I had a show on LA TV called El Movement. You know, I was the first one to um, interview Pitbull and um, Little, Little Wayne and a lot of guys, Daddy Yankee, that came in town and stuff. So I was the kind of guy that um, brung the brown and the black together in the introduction of this through as well as with my friend Kid Frost. When we did the Casa Camino Real, I introduced, um, me and Tony introduced um, Greg Mack to the Teddy Boys, so we were the ones that integrated, you know, the black and brown through music, through hip hop, Florentine Gardens and all that. From then to now, you know, we just went on the road and it became a lot bigger, but still stay rooted in the community. So I started managing a couple of groups. Namek is one of them. Fetty DeMarco's Tookie Williams' nephew, the Sice T's protege. Um, M. Dottie from Detroit. Um, um, Danny, da Daniel Peters, he's an R&B cat, pop cat, he's hot, and sick, he's from the Midwest, so me and Ice-T has a label, um, I'm the co-pilot, it's called Final Level Music, you know, we got that, and we got, f um, The Art of Rap, we did a documentary with 50 of the most influential rappers called The Art of Rap, <clears throat> I was the one that brought a lot of the cats from the West Coast, um, Dr. Dre, and so on, Be Real, E-40, into the film, I was one of the producers, so we did that. Now we're doing the art of rap Latino, so we put it's like the art of rap, but art of rap Latino, the the art of rap with Latinos. You know, if your ethnicity is Latino, you don't have to actually just speak Spanish, but if you got skills, so we you know we messing with you. So that's what we're doing now. We got final level records. We have a concert on the the second of July at the um, Garden Grove Amp with um it's called the Original Gangster Party with Ice T, MC Eight. 
and Namit. And we're gonna have a nice time and stuff. So I can keep See you guys, on. that was just yeah. in a nutshell. Yeah. <laughs> that was just in a nutshell. Now let me ask you this, Namik. Did you know all this history about him, man? Uh what you just said right there, I knew about ninety five percent of it. Okay, okay. <laughs> now let me ask you this. Uh, how long have you been knowing Henji now? Uh probably good, like I'd say three, three, maybe four years now. Okay. Like now that. before those four years, did you know all of this? Now before that I probably knew about fifty percent of that. Okay. <laughs> but that's okay. that's the truth right yeah. there. You know? you, yeah, you know, it's funny that you mentioned Joe Cooley, you mentioned uh, uh, Tony G. Uh, I interviewed yeah, them. The Gemini, yeah. Of yeah. I interviewed Joe Cooley here. Uh, I interviewed Tony G. And to be quite honest with you, those were probably at least my favorite interviews because I knew Joe when I was maybe 14, 15 years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, he mentored me when he came to, to, for, to DJ. Mm, Joe's I, nice. I, I, I never got a chance to really hang out or get to know Tony back then. Mm -hmm. But to be able to catch up with him now and talk music, turntables, needles, vinyl, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it was like this. See, most kids, when they grow up, their superheroes are like Spider-Man and, you know, Superman. Yeah. But my he heroes, believe it or not, were like Muhammad Ali, mm -hmm. Joe Frazier, mm -hmm. you know, Joe Cooley, Tony mm -hmm. G. Mm -hmm. As a kid, those were my heroes. So to have them here and me talk, finally talk music, mm -hmm. things that I wanted to know, it was like a dream come true. So sitting here and, and you spitting game on what you have done and what have you been doing all this time, uh, uh, um, I get geeked out, man, because I, I, I love talking to cats like you, man. Appreciate you know, I, I really do. It. And people like you should be appreciated and should be recognized, Thank you know. You. And that's why I think it was important for you to somewhat give us uh, uh, in a nutshell. Because let's just say that I'm a new cat and I look at you. Here's, here's what a new cat would think. Oh, it's just some black guy with Namek. <laughs> hey, that's true though too, man. And that, that's why I wasn't coming without Hanji today, Tony. I was yeah. Like, Hell no, we got to get Hanji right. Yeah. Here, so. And, and I, I just think that a lot of OGs like yourself uh, never get recognized or never get the respect that they should. So, so for me, my respects, brother. You know. I appreciate, man. You know. Because usually people give people flowers when they dead, so I appreciate that. And yeah. Well, you getting your flowers tonight, brother? With some churros. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's up. So churros is bomb. Yeah. Thank you, man. Uh, now, as far as uh, um, the concert, we, uh, we could just talk about whatever. But I know you got a concert coming up, uh, July second. Yeah. He mentioned it, and this is in Garden Grove. Garden uh, Grove. We're gonna put the we're gonna put the flyer up on the during the break, and then we'll go ahead and um, um, you know you know continue to promote it. Now. Um, I just have to ask you this. It might be a goofy question, and I probably already know the answer, but you met Ice-T? Yes, yes. Okay. That's now, it, as weird as this may sound, okay, do you remember back in the day there was a concert in L.A. called the L.A. Street Scene? Yes. That was in the 80s, correct? Yeah. That was when I first, well, I couldn't even say met him. I just saw Ice-T mm -hmm. because I was a fan of his from a documentary, Breaking the Entering, mm -hmm. that came out in 1983. Yeah. Boogaloo Shrimp, Michael Chambers, Turbo from Breaking, mm -hmm. used to live down the street. He's originally from Wilmington. Okay. Coco, uh, the little kid from Breaking, too, yeah, is from the West Side. He's from Wilmington as well. And uh, I know uh, Boogaloo Shrimp was there, but I saw Ice-T there. And I saw his, he had a hair straight, and it was hanging on his shoulders. Right. Kind of like the Power album a little bit, the, yeah, way, the way he had it. Out. Yeah. And I remember I just kept looking at him, and I just kept looking at him. And to me, you know, as a kid and as a fan, I never thought, is he rich? Because we didn't care about that. If you love hip hop, you love the, the art of it. Okay? The art of rap. Yes, the art of rap. Yes. So when I looked at him, I was like, wow, that's Ice T. And I'm, I walked up to him and I said, excuse me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and I just said, are you Ice T? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, all right. And that was all I said. I was just like <laughs> nervous and shit like I that. I said, yeah. Yeah, that's all he said, <laughs> man. And then, uh, but I never ever had the, uh, the chance to actually meet him. Now, I've been in several places, you know, where he's been, but I never had a chance to meet him. Maybe one day you can make an introduction. Come to the show. Yeah, man. Enough hey, if I'm right, invited, invite, we're inviting you, you on the radio. Come meet Ice on the show. He would love to meet you, man. You have a platform that's been around for a long time. You're not a new jack, bro. Thank you, man. You know? <laughs> Thank you. I, I would love to. Hell yeah, I would love to go. Come to the show. Absolutely. Yes, sir. It's going to be cracking, man. It's going to be great. So we also have an MC8 on the lineup, too. Compton's most wanted, so... That should be pretty cool. Big up the homie Droops from Out the House Productions. You know, putting, putting that one together for the most part. Yeah. Boy Hanji making that phone call, getting ice on the line, and we made this one happen, man. So it should be a great show on July 2nd. It's awesome. Now, Hen, what what was it about Namek that you saw that you said, I want to manage this kid? 
lyrics. Lyrics, okay. And he didn't sound like your, um, any other Mexican that I've met before. He had lyrics, and I just advised him to put more Spanish words from his culture in his lyrics. Mm -hmm. So, and he did that. And um, he had a, a, an album with cocaine. I met him via my boy Spider, via um, um, cocaine. I mean, cocaine, he was working with him first. And Jimmy yeah, Lowe. Jimmy Lowe. So, yeah. When I heard that, it blew my mind. I wanted the record, but Cocaine put it out already with him. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so we started recreating some music, and then from that, we was tussling because he wanted to stay on the underground, and that was cool because he said, why can't I do that? You guys started it. I'm like, yeah, but trying to keep you on the radio, right. Right, but not sounding like today's generation. Right. So he listened, and then he has a studio at his own crib at his house. So that was amazing. You know, When he wakes up hip-hop, he goes to sleep hip-hop. A lot of rappers don't do that. And I'm glad you said that, uh, you know, because I remember getting up and uh, my thing was DJing. Mm -hmm. I had to get up. Sometimes I didn't even brush my fucking grill. And I, would, I, I woke up in my butt huggers, just turn on my 1200s, you know, <laughs> put the needle and just start cutting. My mom used to come in there. You're already doing this? And I was like, hold on. You know, yeah. you want to you want to practice that scratch. You know, you, you're trying to get that kick, kick, clean. You know? It's like today's video games. Kids wake up to play the game, go online, Twitter, and all that. We used to wake up and hit the turntable. Hit, hit the turntable, yeah. man. So, you learn yeah. a new scratch. Every DJ had their own style, yeah. had their own scratching, just like poppers back then had their own moves. Today, DJs all sound the same to me. Yeah. You know, they all sound the same. I, I, I'm not saying that they're whack, but it just all sounds the same like a lot of today's rap. You know, they all sound, they all sound the same. Um Let's talk a little bit about the album or the single or the three songs that we talked about. The EP, the Battle yes, Cat, with Battle Cat. With Battle Cat. Yes, so, sir. how did that come about with Battle Cat? Yeah, uh, shout out OG Battle Cat, man. Uh, we got a three song EP in the works right now. That was pretty much put together. The idea came about with me and the homies from West Coast Creations. You know, shout out okay. Johnny Dopey and the team for holding yeah. me down. Yeah, and uh, you know, we were kind of just thinking because they knew I was a big like a G Funk artist, and they knew I was. Fucking with Battle Cat, you know, Battle Cat's one of my favorite artists. So they were like, hey, man, I, I think uh, we might be able to make something happen. You know, started the conversation and, and Battle Cat was, was fucking with it. Of course, the cosign from Han is, is the, the ultimate bonus. So once we got that cosign, we got in the lab and created three bangers, man. One single was dropped right now by the, the name Priceless. That's featuring the homie Inhale, a.k.a. Baby Nate Dog. And uh, just kind of that, that vintage mid to late 90s type of funky shit that I always wanted to do. We were finally able to execute that one, man. So it wasn't easy, easy because Cat wanted to at least see how Namik get down. So he'd been watching him before um, he did the production. You okay, know, that was kind of fire. No, but I'm glad that you said that because I shared before that in usually the late '90s when I did most of my production, really throughout the '90s. But when I started working with a lot of Chicano rappers, um, like who? I'll, I'll name a few. Uh, I did stuff with Frost. I did stuff with my. Uh, uh, Nino Brown, AOT, JV, Little Rob, uh, Don Cisco from the Bay Area, uh, my boy G from the Lawless Click out here. Um, uh, one person I won't name, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I pretty much during that time, predominantly all Chicano rappers, I want to say from 97 to like 99. I know eight out of 10 of them that you just mentioned actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You probably, if I name the, the other guy, you'll know who he is. But but um, but there were more, uh, um, there were more rappers that I worked with, but it's just that none of them come to mind. I was supposed to work, work with, with I see, right? yeah, I produced his first record. And I, I, you ain't say that. Well, I, I guess because you, Chicano I, rappers right now, yeah, I guess part. I was talking about Chicano rappers yeah. at the time, but I, I did stuff with High C. He looked, he looked Mexican anyway. <laughs> you know, here's the crazy part. I see he said a couple of Spanish words in some of his songs. Yeah. And I don't know why, every time we toured, girls would ask him, are you Mexican? And I'm like, he's got a jewelry curl, you know? Yeah, yeah he's part. kind of lighter than me, though. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> He'll pass more to test than I would. But, but that's what they asked, are you Mexican? He was like, nah, nah. I used to tell him like this, look, bro, just say, see. Si. Just say, just say, see. Si. You know, hablas español, just you say, si. poquito. Oh, Poquito. And he would do that and he would get with Mexican girls. <laughs> Simple as that. <laughs> that's the but, speak. Yeah. So now, okay. Uh, God, I forgot where I was going. What was my, my question now? As far as Chicano rappers, okay. I'm glad you said that, that Battle Cat wanted to hear him first because there it's was a stereotypical a, thing when you say you look at Namek's picture, you won't even know he sound like that. Right, right. And my thing was that 
I would sell beats before I actually even heard some of the rappers. Mm. And then when I would have to go in there and track them, I would be like, nah, bro, you ain't saying that shit over this beat. Mm. You know, and, and it's sad. Uh, a couple of times I actually had to give them their money back wow. and just say, you know what, I, I can't do this. Because some of these guys were just ballers that... Wanted to rhyme. Wanted to rhyme, bro. Yeah, like today. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, they want the spotlight. And I'm like, bro, you're, you're supposed to be the guy behind the scenes, the low-key guy, the guy with the feria. Yeah. But you're over here now. I, I want to be seen. I, I, I'm a rapper. And then when rapping didn't work, he wanted to become a dancer. When dancing didn't work, he wanted to become an actor. And cool, uh, you know, chase your dreams. But here's my thing. At least have some talent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that works. That would help, man. That would help. <laughs> you know? But, um, okay, so, so how many songs can uh, uh, people expect with from you and Battle Cat as of right now? Well, one is out as of now. Uh -huh. We got two on the way. Might be releasing it later this summer. I, I truly feel, though, that the, being patient is the best thing right now, man, because we're already under the belt. So it's kind of like just the, the momentum building up and just kind of waiting for the perfect time, you know? Okay. We're working the records like back in the days. You know, people throw a record out a month. That's cool and everything, but we could throw a record out and have two remixes and what have you, then come to the other one and more life for the record. That's very, very true because yeah. how, uh, how many artists today that, that re have released music, let's just say within the last three years, are still going to be remembered five years from now. It's kind of scary. I heard Kendrick Lamar's album came out, and it was just like a rush to how much it would do within the first two weeks. And after that, then the next cat that came out. That's kind of real scary. And Kendrick is one of the biggest ones in the world. So yeah. it's kind of a shaky situation in hip-hop right now. It is. I, I remember back in the days, and I, maybe on your end you guys did it differently, people would drop a single, you know, and then maybe a couple of months later drop another single and then eventually drop the album and then work the album like pretty much all damn year. Yeah. Today, work the singles. Yes. To introduce the album. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. I remember when Run DMC first came out, they had It's Like That. Mm -hmm. They they they, they uh, worked that one. And on the other side, I believe it was Sucker MCs. Mm -hmm. And then Hard Times was next. And then the album dropped. And we didn't even know what they looked like really yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah. You know? But they showed half of their heads. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And and I, I like those days better, man. I really, really like because they, we would push those singles for, for months and then people are dying for the next one. Yeah. I think anticipation is what's missing from today's music. Like, man, I cannot, example, I cannot wait to hear Nemec's album. You know, I hear Henji's behind it. He's doing shows with Ice-T and he hasn't released anything. I can't wait. I think that's what's missing today from music. Mm -hmm. uh, example, the Power album drops on Monday at uh, Music Plus, Warehouse, Tower <laughs> Records. Yeah. Okay, but it's Friday. But it drops Monday. Yeah. Shit, I want to get that. Fuck. That's what's missing, I believe, today from music. They give you an autograph if they talk to Violet Brown for Tower Records. Exactly. He, she's another one that I, I interviewed here. Yeah. Uh, her uh, um, and a couple of cats that you mentioned uh, I interviewed here. Violet Brown is another one that um, is a good friend to, to, to be, especially, be with, especially in this business. Yes. You know? Yeah, well, so. that's cool. I, I had one quick conversation with her at the observatory. I was opening up for Quick and Sugar Free, which we also have a show with on, Ju on July 16th at the Garden Amp as well. But this okay. was probably around six or seven years, maybe like seven, eight years ago, where she was backstage and I, I had just got done performing. I, I get backstage and she's like, man, who the fuck are you? Like, you're an opener? I was just like, yeah, I gave her my demo, gave her my business card, and unfortunately, she never hollered back, but I always remember that day, and I remember that was that was Violet Brown right there, right. you know, who she I hear busy. nothing but good things she about. She's busy now. She's yeah. working with Tech 9 and them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah she, uh, I know she was telling me she was running this whole label yes. at, at one point. And uh, uh, I had an artist who I will leave unnamed that I thought, I thought was probably going to be something bright in the future. I'll leave it at that. I thought it was going to be big. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, I introduced him to Violet Brown, and uh, he didn't know who she was. And I said, "Look, just meet her. That's all I'm gonna say. This is the person that can change your life. Change your life. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. So she heard his demo, and she called me the next day, and she said, "I loved it. I loved it because I haven't heard nothing like this in a long time." And I said, "That's cool. That's cool." I said, uh, "She was give him my number. Ha have him and call me." So I called him and I just said, hey, she wants you to call her. He goes, for real? Yeah. Who was this again? And I'm like, 
Damn. I said, do me a favor and just call her. She wrote it on his hand. Yeah. So a month later, I see him again. How did it go? What? He didn't call her. He never called her, bro. And I never, ever told him again, call her. I just left it alone. It, 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 if you're going to be about the, the business, if you're going to be about the music, you need to take every opportunity that is presented to you. If, you know, you're wise enough to know like, hey, uh, hen, who's that? Oh, that's Violet. Should I call her? Yeah, well, you fucking better call me. <laughs> business before call music, people don't understand that. Business is first. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I'm realizing now, you know, fortunately. Yeah, you know, it, it, Hen, in a, in a nutshell, uh, uh, what year, if you can recall, and how did you and your brother meet Ice-T? Um, <clears throat> I forgot what year. Was that like 80, I think, like 84 or something like that? Okay. And um, we went to, we heard him on the radio on K-Day that he was rocking with Uncle Jam's Army at the Veterans Auditorium, you know, Egyptian Lover, and then Bob, Bobcat, DJ Pooh and them. Back in the day, so we had to go over there and see the only rapper that we've heard on the radio. So Ice was rapping the commercial for the joint. So then we went over there and we seen him on stage with his um, red suit on, his perm, his girl. Seen him rocking on the stage, so we waited for him to come back I, downstairs. And my brother, I, myself, and my, my boy Shaquille hit Ice up and said, yo, we rhyme, we're from New York. We had a bunch of little chains on and stuff, you know, he was young. And then we said, yo, here's our number. Ice gave him us his number. My, my boy was talking shit, so Ice showed us, uh, it was funny. His um, um, checkbook with like, like 100000 on in it when we were kids. It was funny, you know. Wow. So, <laughs> we were like, okay, cool. Then he came over our crib with the group formerly known as Body Count. They was his homeboys. You know, Sh um, Shiny Sean, um, um, Vic, uh, Beatmaster V, and a couple of other the fellas. And um, they, you know, came to check us out. And I got a liking to us. We got a liking to him. And we was kind of dominating two different parts of town. I just had the hood. We had the Latino community. We put that together because we, Evil and I, are not in the gang, so we feared no gang because we got along with gang types when we came out from New York. Yeah. So we got along with the essays, the Bloods, the Crips, everything, and we started rocking. We feared that the, the specialty that my brother and I had that we didn't care what area we was in. We wasn't, you know, affiliated with gang. We just wanted to rock. And we was the, basically some of the first ones that went in the wildest hoods to make them wave their hands in the air without guns. Yes. <laughs> you yes, know what I'm saying? Yes. Wave That's your dope, hands bro. in the air. That's wave your hands. They waved. They was having a good time. They not. They weren't known for somebody turning them up. They was just all competitive within street fashion, not really just rocking the crowd and partying. They didn't understand that. So we came and rocked the crowd all night long. You know what I mean? So right. that was the difference between us and everybody else. What, what, what year, again, did you guys come back? Uh, come from New York? And what we part of New York? We came in 82 from Brooklyn, Brooklyn, New York. Okay. Um, Crown Heights, near Bedford-Stuyvesant, Weeksville Projects. Okay. Um, um, and, um, yeah, we moved over here, went to Bell, Bell High School, and played basketball. Okay. And from there, we just... We're on a world tour with ice. Can, can, can you give us a picture for those that, because to me, growing up, everything was East Coast. You know, yeah. if you, you looked at Style Wars, you looked at B Street, mm -hmm. you know, you looked at uh, the other, other Wild Style. Wild Style. Yeah. Every, a lot of cats from out here wanted to be East Coast, mm -hmm. okay? I could paint a picture of what the 80s were like here, and I know you know already through the crack and the, the gang, you know, violence of, was at an all-time high mm -hmm. during that time. Mm -hmm. How was it like in New York at that time, right before you guys left? Can you give us somewhat of a picture of what was going on there? It wasn't really much gangs. I was too young to see whether there was gangs or not. There was a lot of killing going on and stabbing just around the community that we was used to. So that's why our moms took us out the projects to Los Angeles. And we was we did never want to leave that. That was our Beverly Hills because we didn't know nothing. Right. So New York was, as Redman says, concrete city. It's like really hard. The energy is hard. It's, it's more struggle because the weather is very, very uncomfortable in the wintertime. Yeah. You know what I mean? So even the, the homeless need sheepskin coats to stay warm, <laughs> you know, so, and coffee. So that's the difference between there and here. Over here, you can recognize it's just territorial more in a sense. Okay, okay. So you, when you come over here, was that the first time you, you guys came over here? Or have you guys had been here before before you guys actually moved? Now, we visited here. We hated it because there was not many people in the streets compared to New York. In New York, you go outside any time of the day. It's just crazy crowded. Over here, it's like everybody's just chilling in the crib. Mm. You know, the streets are not as crowded. It, except the downtown areas. You know. ha, have you gotten a chance to visit New York? Not yet, not yet. I'm looking forward to that whenever the opportunity arises, though, for real. Yeah, you know, I, I've always said this, and I said it for years, that if you're a hip-hop artist, you got to visit New York. Yeah, you, you know, I have to. I'm we're going to go there. they got a lot of heads. i got him to, in, to introduce him to. 
Yeah, yeah that's dope. That's some dope. work out there soon. I got to yeah. visit the Mecca. So. Yeah, no, that's where it all started. So I had a goal with DJ Cool Herc, DJ, uh, August 11, 1973, I believe. His yeah, first yeah. DJ party. I was right there. I went to Best Eye. I paid my respects to where Biggie grew mm -hmm. up at and everything. Took a picture right to the mural. I was in high school over there. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. 35. And uh, uh, I was staying in Harlem. I got a, a friend that lives in Harlem, so I stayed there with him. You know, so to me, the first time I went over there, I, I really felt like, <sighs> yeah, yeah, right. This is like it. You made it. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. You, you, seriously, man. The energy so, is totally different, right? It's just go. Yes, yes, you yes. Go. You know, you get caught sleeping, you'd be on the side of the road somewhere, <laughs> but it's just go. The exactly. mentality and everything. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and take a break. We're going to come right back. We're going to continue to talk hip hop, man. So yeah. once again, everybody, call somebody, text somebody, slap the shit out of somebody, and let them know that Henji and Namek are in the motherfucking building, and we're just getting started. We'll be back 10 minutes.
Welcome back, everyone, to Rodium Radio, episode 259, I believe. Yes, 259. Man, I'm losing. I'm getting old. Anyways, uh, we're going to go ahead and jump right back into it with Henji and Namek. Henji and Namek, once again, thank you for being here. It's greatly a, a, a pleasure. It's old school, new school. This is the way I kind of see it, you know. And I love having conversations like the kind we were having, especially pertaining to hip hop, because uh, when B Real was here, um, he spoke how hip hop not only saved his life, but saved our lives. We could have been out there gang banging and selling dope or doing whatever the fuck we wanted, but we stayed inside because we like turntables. Yeah. You know, we like we liked, uh, uh, vinyl, we like scratching, you know, and that's just one element of hip hop, yes. you know. Um, Namik, let me ask you this. When I say today's music, I don't know, do you listen to the radio at all? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Do you like today's rap that they're playing on the radio? It's not that I like it. I I, uh, I accept it. Okay. I accept it now. Okay. For what it is. And do you listen to the radio? Um. Yeah, I got to find out what's going on in the industry, you know. Okay. I don't tend to stick my ears on it because it's repetitive. A lot of it sound the same. Okay. And, and you being from the, the very, and when I say the very beginning, I'm talking about the very beginning of hip hop. West okay. Coast. West Coast, okay. Um, how do you feel or about, like, trap music? As I said, there's different strokes for different folks. Back in the days, it was different drugs, so we sounded like the drugs that we take. You know what I mean? We was drinking 40 <laughs> ounces and smoking joints and stuff. Yeah. Now they're doing just a whole bunch of drugs, so you can hear it within their delivery. Yeah, now, yeah. now everybody's all peeled out and... The majority, let's say, there's some that's saying I don't do it, I'm sure, that's listening to us, but the majority, nine out of ten, they get fucked up, you know, so, yeah, within different the, types of drugs. So. I, I mean, but that's kind of like, I mean, that, to me, that's crazy how times have changed, and I, I know we live in a different time, but I know, like, Easy e had Dope Man, Ice Cube had, like, Gangsta Gangsta, but I couldn't imagine them rapping that, and then... Yeah, yeah. Because they're talking about being the dope man, yeah. not, not the dope smoker. Don't get you know? high off your own supply. There you I go. heard that. So <laughs> this period, I mean, it's a different era. Like they thought we was crazy back in the days when we was rapping. You know, we got caught up. The president of the United States said, said something about Ice T when we did the cop killer thing, and they said um, it was a rap record. It was rock and roll. They just wanted to not let the inner city have any power. So now they're talking about freedom of speech. Now you know they're trying to the the, the trap rappers right now. They're trying to um, limit what they got to say, you know, give them Rico cases and stuff like that. We, that's the last thing that they should take from us is what we need to say. Right. And it's happening now, so it's, it's crazy, man. You, you know, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, okay, because I, I don't listen to too much rap. I really don't. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of just waiting for this generation of rap. I see like a parade, and they're waving at mm -hmm. me, and I don't wave back. Just keep going. Yeah, keep yeah. going because I'm waiting for the good shit to come in, you know. Uh, it's kind of like a train. You know, when you see a train, you're like, where in the fuck is that last little one? You know, it's the last <laughs> train. So The good shit is still in there. You know, you just got to find it. I, I know, I know. But uh, gems like yourself and other gems are hard because they're being uh, overlooked because of these guys with the weird hair color, hairs and yeah. the drugs and the fancy clothes, or the weird clothes, I guess. Let's say different because, you know, as I said, when we was young, they used to call us weird when our clothes of were hanging off our hands. Different. You know, they had the baggy stuff. So they yeah. just, this, it's a it's a season. Right. And, and, and back in the day, we just sport a nice little sag. Today, motherfuckers are just showing their whole ass. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Like designing drawers, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yo, yo, what was a... Uh, I seen a few OGs talking about it, and I know it's documented that there was actually like a a law that was passed or something like that back in the day, where the government was kind of allowing hip hop to be played more and allowing people to talk more negative about gangs and drugs to pretty much to kill our own community and shit like that. Did you guys hear about anything like that? I mean, there's a lot of yeah. stuff. We'll have a need a three hour conversation on that one, man. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but man. I, I I know there was some that some that got passed that some of the OGs were talking about. I thought you guys might have knew something about that from back in the day. Like one of the bones said something the other day. Y'all look it up in regards to a meeting that he had that it was kind of like the, the guys that owned the jails wanted the rap community to say more, talk about more violence. So a lot of people they look lock more people exactly. up. Exactly, that's, yeah. that's what I'm getting money yeah. when people are locked up. If nobody's in jail, they ain't making no money, so. It's a business, man. Yeah. And we're the product. Yeah. Black and brown. That's why I, I take uh, this music thing very serious, and I don't really talk about the gang thing, you know, like. Right. I, I, I really, uh, I'm, I'm positive with my shit for the most part, yeah. bro, and I, I take a lot of pride in that, you know. 
you, you know, and, and here's the thing that today I know a lot of like dudes that are about that life. When I say they're active gang gangsters yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're rapping about stuff that they, that they've done. And I just think to myself, man, one day somebody's just going to look into it and find out if that's true. The reason why I bring that up is because just recently, now correct me if I'm wrong, didn't a rapper, I believe it's Young Thug, get arrested and he's being tried for murder because they, they're using his own lyrics against them in court? I don't Did know you, if you watch the internet, but a lot of the rappers that I deal with, them dot and them during the day, they let me know what's going on on the social media. It's crazy, man. They're, they're hitting them with Ricos with stuff that they sit down at home eating popcorn, watching them, them snitch on themselves. If that's what you're saying. Yeah. Yes. The guns Young and Thug is one of them. Yeah. Some of them say that we're doing this for the community. We're um, businessmen. We have LLCs. But you can't erase all of that shit that you put up there when you got caught up by the cops. They already documented it. So right. you should think before you make your moves. That's what they don't understand in this generation. You got to like think. We already made the mistakes for them by hitting the walls we hit, but they still ain't listening to us. So. Yeah, yeah. So you did hear about that Young Thug thing? I know he's locked up right now. Uh, I'm, so I'm only assuming that's what it's for. Bro. Yeah, because so, so, uh, yeah, uh, uh, somebody somebody sent me something on social media where um, they said that, well, it, it's like the news. I don't, again, I don't know, like, all of it, but they were saying, oh, yeah, we're using his lyrics and his post mm -hmm. against them, like, as evidence. And, and I'm thinking, if they're doing that, then... You know, and I'm just not just saying this about him. I'm just saying this in general about rappers. Then they're really snitching on on themselves. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Sure. absolutely. Wow. Okay. Wow. I hope they're hearing this and documenting it, and rewinding it, man. This is a lot of game for them. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. That's what's up. You know what? Um, what what is one thing that when you heard Ice T bus? When I say bus rap, uh, uh, and I only say that for the. I know you know what that means, mm -hmm. but what was it about him? That said, man, I really want to fuck with this dude. I really want to work with this guy. Ice works till this day since 6 in the morning till at nighttime. And he always says his age. He's 65 now. Yeah. You know, so he made a lot of money. And just I seen the energy he had. He, you know, he didn't have any parents. So I was just looking at the, just the drive that he had. You know, and he took a lot of the homies with him, too. So when I seen that, I wasn't the homie from the community, his hood or nothing like that or where he grew up at. I just came over here from another place, of, you know, the East Coast. And when we got along, got together, we just, just kept making moves. It's a lifestyle, in other words. Right. So I just kept that player lifestyle and incorporated player and gangster into hip hop. So they called it, the media called it gangster rap. Right. You know, so it was right. rap, but they put gangster in it. I said, okay, gangster rap. I guess I'm the first that did gangster rap. So he just rolled with it. We had a conversation with Dr. Dre. I took Ice to Dre's house, and we were talking about that. And they were laughing because they said that, you know, people don't know that the media is the one that named gangster rap. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's so crazy. it was a lifestyle. Went around the world. Ice had a gun on his chest. when we were, Remember the gun he had yeah. back in the days? They were like, why are you wearing a gun? He said, well, the police wear a gun, so it's to protect myself, to let them know. And they was looking at him crazy. Ice was always a politician. He thought ahead of us because he's older than us. Yeah. You know, so he read a lot. A lot of us thought we knew everything until we got older and more things was more a priority. This Ice was paying bills for a long time. We were still at Mama and Pop's house. You know, so he had to get out there and do what he had to do. And he had to have the look that you've seen him have with the perm and the Porsche because that's the look, you know, you have to not look like everybody else. So right. Ice was the first perm that I seen. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I seen it. I'm like, okay. And, it's different. You know, we got Caesars over there with the haircuts and the waves. That's where I came from, the land of that. I came over here and seen players and pimps and all of that, and it was interesting. I used to see it on TV. Yeah, so. yeah. So I lived in the hood in L.A. I didn't go to uptown a lot because I was young. I was still young. Right. So when I came here, it was like, woo, shit, Sunset Boulevard, they roll hard. Crenshaw, I mean, you know, Compton, everything was cool. I, and I got all of that from DJing. I traveled around Los Angeles, knowing L.A. through different hoods, through music. And I still do that through nonprofit. And I meet all the gang leaders because they deal in gang intervention. So we're like the the, the upscale of this hip-hop that deal with the big bros and the little bros. You know, try to right. keep everything intact. In okay. I'm still here. I ain't get shot in the face and nothing or step to it. Nothing, <laughs> through the errors that I've been in this wild industry. You know, right. you know how it is. It's more beefs. It's like people want to just have beefs with you for no reason. For no fucking reason. You shine and they're like, oh, man, I hate him. Well, why is that, man? Because they're not where you're at. 
That's the simplest way to answer. You know, you work hard. Some of them just want to be by you and suck some of your juice, you know, and stuff. And But you're working. The proof's in the pudding. I'm looking at you. You're looking at me. We've been in the game for a minute. So yeah. ain't nobody calling up saying, yo, I'm going to pull up on you, man. Let's do this and running up on us and that because I, I don't practice on fucking people over. I'm sure you yeah. don't either. You would not be able to have this podcast. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> you guys absolutely. earned it, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Earned it, man. Man. work, work. Yeah. Again. Now, now, um, you know, you know. and if I had to twist your arm, uh, your favorite Ice T album. Um, I like them all, man. I've been with Ice so long, man. I mean, we 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 perform all the songs, those different episodes, different eras, different times. So, you know, Power was a hot one because my brother and Darlene and Ice was on the cover, and when we went over all, all over the world, a lot of people wanted to see Darlene more than see us. That was interesting, <laughs> <laughs> but but it was dope. It was nice. It was big. You know, it was it was interesting. That's when we were getting more so on that commercial hip hop thing. Uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe you can help me out. Okay, I don't know any other or any better album cover to identify if you will gangster rap or some pimp shit more than that power album cover like everything was there you got beauty you know and the beast and the yes beast. <laughs> all yeah, in one right there yeah um, all strapped up that, that, that was that, ice's intention man like you know we got the power yeah you know he hey, loved, so. the thing that i loved about it too is that he always says we got the minds of the kids the parents hate that so he always said that. It's like, yo, we got their minds. That's why the parents are like rebelling and on the news talking shit about us because we have their kids watching our videos, buying our music. And if there's um, the X-rated versions, they play when their parents just got their backs turned. You know, there's a lot of kids that couldn't play Chuck D and Public Enemy and them. They was talking crazy. Yeah. Or Ice or NWA. They had to sneak the cassettes out, you know what I mean? Yes, Playing yes. where their moms and pops wasn't home. Right, right. You know, what, what about you, Namek? Let me ask you, are you a big Ice T fan? Yeah, for sure, bro. Like, it's, that's the legend right there, homie, yeah. you know? Like, but when it comes down to it, though, me, me being still of a younger generation of hip-hop, I kind of grew up on the, the next, of the, course. Like the, the, you know, the, the 10 years after that, like yeah. the, the Corrupts and the Exhibits and the, the DJ Quicks and shit like that, even though Quick was around in the late 80s as well. But, you know, for the most part, I kind of, I adapted more to, like, the, the mid-90s homies and shit like that mm -hmm. when when ice kind of blew up in more of the earlier nineties and shit. Okay. You know, so. Now, uh, Hen was saying that you got equipment or you got a studio at your house. Yeah. Yeah. It's been holding it down right there. Open eye studios is pro tools. Okay. You know. Now have you dabbled in the production yet? I I'm asking cause I don't know if you're producing yet. Yeah, bro. I actually, uh, does records I, every I, week. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I, I make beats and stuff. Uh, I record myself. Once I do that, I send the files off to my main engineer to mix and master. But I record myself for the most part, and uh, I actually do a lot of custom songs for people's brands, companies, or just personal custom songs if they want them. And more than half of the time, I'm making the actual beat and just pretty much doing the whole thing myself, you know? So, yeah, man, I've been dabbling in the production a lot more the past couple of years, and it's helping out, bro. That'll we'll work. send the cash yeah. app for that, for the beats and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no, for real, though, <laughs> if, if anybody needs a, a custom song, you know, I got you. I just did one for the homie Ink Junkie. Shout out my boy Ink Junkie. La Bomba Michelada mix. Uh, we got plenty in the works, bro. So that'll yeah. work, man. That's, the, that's, that's that'll work. Staying busy, staying staying productive, man. Because one thing that you'll never get back is time. That's and there's nice. a lot of people that waste time, bro. Yeah. You know, uh, when the, the whole COVID COVID hit, people. Many people reinvented themselves. What can I do now? Or what can I get better at? Or can I work on me? I started the podcast right on time, bro. A couple of months before COVID hit, I, st I started this podcast. People stayed home, and this thing took off. For real? I, yes. I thought you had it since like 2018. September, September 11, 2019. And then about three months later, COVID hit yeah, January, yeah. I believe. So like your show was around longer. Yeah, it's about to be three years. <laughs> yeah. Just the yeah. name, like, the name yeah. Rodium. Just make Probably because of the like Rodium like swap meet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. Yep. So, yeah. Um, but now, uh, are you? I'm sure you were familiar with him. I just wanted to know if you knew him, Steve Yano. Uh, the, the Asian dude that did the rhodium. That's him. Back in the day. Yeah. When Dre and him used to go over there. Yes, yeah. that's him. Um, I did a documentary about his life. Yeah. Uh, um, I got everybody except Dre and Cube on there. I couldn't get a hold of him. And then finally, when I got to Dre's assistant, obviously, they were just saying that he wasn't doing anything because they had just did the Defiant Ones. 
So it's cool, whatever. So I went ahead and did it. I had Mr. Cartoon because that's where I met Cartoon at in the Rodeo Swamp meet. Uh, I had Violet Brown. I had Lonzo. I had Arabian Prince, Kalayan Tail. I had about 20 people all on there. And um, uh, uh, Kelvin Anderson from VIP. Mm-hmm. So I had him on, on there as well. And I had all those guys on here as well. And I didn't know that this was going to take a life of its own. I only started this podcast just to promote the documentary, and that was it. But when I saw that Raza did not have a platform, was not getting any shine, I said, let's just keep it going and let's just promote ourselves. That's you know, up, yeah. you know, because if we don't look out for ourselves, ain't nobody else going to do it. Yeah. You know, Power 106, 92.3 to be KD or whatever, they ain't going to look out for us. They just do those yeah. that's got money enough. It's like the they do what they can. You know, they do what they can. I, I see the homegirl, Cece, the mamacita, homies like Jay Cruz. Like when they can, they'll they'll try to pull a string or two and, and try mm-hmm. to hook me up with some shit. You know, I've, I've been on those radio platforms a few times and I'm, I'm grateful for that, you know. Right. But, but you're right, like for the most part. No, they can only do so much. You work so hard for that. The relationship. That's what it was. Those that don't have the relationship, you got to pay dough to get get over there. Or you got to, like, I don't know, it's kind of hard. Like I was saying, you can't make a lot of noise like you did back in the days because these big stars' records is being hot for two weeks. They got to come for another one. So it's, it's kind of hard. You got to have a built-in community and you're good. That's what you're working at right now. Getting a real core. He's not buying followers. So there's people that buy followers and friends online. And the blue Namaste. check mark. Yeah, the black, buy the blue check. Yeah, he working at his. He got people that that um, connect with him and then act with him online that he see at the concert. They want to buy a shirt and stuff and stuff yeah. like that. They want to say, what's up, take a picture. So it's all organic. build up. Yeah, it's working. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I wanted to share something with you because during the break, we were talking about DJ Aladdin. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, the first time I saw him spin, and this was a memorable show that I was at. It was March 24th, I believe, but I know it was March 1988 at the Anaheim Celebrity Theater. They had the round circle thing. Nick Masters, um, yes, on that. Where, 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 where they, the yet. stage would turn. Yeah, and every seat in that house was a good seat, bro. Every seat. Well, the stage is turning the whole time. Yes, that's, that's dope. Um, the so, de- was that when NWA was there? Yes. It was a crazy fight that happened that night. Yes. Yo, I was there. Yeah. <laughs> the DOC had, was just doing the formula. Like yeah. His single had just dropped. That's crazy. So I saw him there. Uh, I was backstage because Steve Yano knew Dre and yeah. him. So he took me. First night I met Jerry Heller. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but it was so dope because you literally had to run through the crowd to get up on stage. It was almost like a damn boxing match. Yeah. You know how the boxers w- w- walk right. through the people? Yeah. That's how it was. But the stage moved around in the circle. Yeah. And sometimes bro. that was crazy because as the rapper moved around, there was different hoods around the circle. Yes. So <laughs> yes. very interesting, yes. Yeah, right? <laughs> so Ice-T was the headliner. And uh, um, um, I mean, I-, I stayed for a show, an amazing show. King T opened up for NWA. King T had just dropped the Act of Fool album. Feeling Act of Fool. King T, man. And rest in peace, Max Master Spade was on stage with him. Yeah, with R.I.P. Spade. DJ Pooh was up there playing, the, hitting some beats on the SP12. Yeah. And DJ Aladdin was on the turntables. Oof. That's when I saw Aladdin on Rock the Band. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. uh, like, fuck. We got early stories about Aladdin, you know? So my brother and I, we kind of had to ask his moms that he can go to a battle with us in Chicago. So we had to go right. ask moms. And Aladdin was already packed up. And we went to Europe, won the contest with Shafiq. Um, he's from from Sarai, they did a lot of he did a lot of Kanye West records and stuff. So we, you know, knew Aladdin early, and Aladdin was always hungry. That's why you know he came under the rhyme syndicate. He was doing his thing. He found a lot of um, inspiration from um, Battle Cat, no Bob Cat, Bob Cat. Okay, now did that was LL Cool J's DJ. Those that don't know, yes, yes. Oh, um, I'm trying to remember that the uh, New Jack City, yes, with Ice T, yes. Is it true, I, I'm, if I'm correct, that Aladdin produced that song? Yes. Okay. Just wanted to get that clear. Yes. So, <laughs> it, 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 go ahead. I was going to say, uh, you guys never really linked up back in the day then, huh? No, like, I would see him, been, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I, I just, like, it's like, I've known artists, bro, and for some reason, we just never went up to each other. Yeah, it was yeah. like Tony G. I would see him everywhere, but I just never really went like... Hey, what's up, man? Yeah, he was a quiet yeah. guy, probably, because we was everywhere, man. Yeah. High C was everywhere, too. He was before High C, is what you yeah. said. Yeah. Way yeah. before him. Uh, I met High C at the 1989 at the Rodian Swami, and he was there selling clothes. <laughs> and it, uh, Cube, easy those couldn't, couldn't rap on my mixtapes no more because they took off. Mm. And I met High C, and he goes, hey, I rap. No, I want to say late 88 when I met him. I rap. I didn't really like his rhymes, but I liked his voice. 
So we just said, okay, we ain't got nobody to rap on our mixtape, so let's come through. And then we ended up getting signed to Disney. Oh, so, I didn't know that. Crazy. From a mixtape when we weren't even trying to find a record deal. <laughs> <laughs> got signed. Yeah, it got signed. But you know what? That's one thing I always say. Release good music and money will come knocking. A, a lot of people want to chase a paycheck and it's just like a damn carrot dangling in front of their face and they never get to it. R release good music and money will come. You know? You gotta be sure. consistent. Yeah, it's gotta be consistent. Yeah. Now, uh, um, you released a video, if I'm correct, right? Recently? Yeah, uh, the one Priceless with, with Battle Cat. Okay. Hill. Is that the one with Noel G? Yeah, yeah, that's the one with Noel G. He's playing like the little fruit thaw man right there, selling fruit on the corner. Oh, yeah? And the, the whole concept of the video is kind of symbolizing the black and brown unity thing, man, because, uh, you know, the, the fruit man kind of gets confronted by, a, by the black homie who's kind of like, feeling disrespected because the, the female is, is giving the fruit man the eye, you know, and kind of doesn't really like what he's seeing. So, like, he kind of tr tries to talk shit to, to Noel, and then my other homies come through and just put, put their own homie in check type shit, you know. It's kind of just signifying the unity thing, man. Right. Everybody who hasn't seen it, go ahead and check out that video right now. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Priceless. Priceless, man. Big up Noel G, man. That, that was a beautiful day. Good turnout. Good video shoot right there. Yeah, when uh, uh, when did that video drop? I know you said recently, but was that today, yesterday? No, nah, no, nah, it's probably been out for like a good month now, or something okay. like that. Okay, so. you know it's, it's weird. I just came across it today. Oh, you did? Yeah. Right. So it might be still new to a lot of us. Make sure you go check out that interview. I mean that that uh, video, priceless. Yeah, priceless. DJ Battle Cat Namic and Inhale. Inhale. Shot by the homeboy Guap City. Okay, and, and Inhale happens to be whose son? That's a the late Nate Dog son right there. Right, you know, so. right. GT Distribution. Yeah, yeah. What up, Goto? Empire. All that. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. Goto's another music. one that I interviewed here. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool, cool dude, man. Yeah, cool yeah. dude. Cool. Yeah. Uh, um, now, is there ever gonna be a Namek Ice T song? Yes. Okay. <laughs> go, go, go ahead and say that again, here. Huh? Yes. There yes. we go. Right. Ice is another one like Battle Cat. We check everybody else before we make a move. Cause right. You could be doing a, I'll a drink show. To that one. I'll you drink know when people one. have that like five minutes and they all that, but he watches and sees consistency. That's the era we come from, the golden era. You can't just listen to uh, one hit and judge the dude. Correct. So you got to look online and see if they're a clown or if they're down. You know, some right. people are like living Disneyland life online as if they're really living that life to get followers. There's right. some of us that you can feel and see that's doing the real deal. Right. So okay. that's how we judge and see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you an old school question. And this is for both of you guys. For sure. Do you guys remember Stop the Violence? Yes, of course. Yeah. Okay, with the song from the East Coast. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Do you guys remember uh, All in the Same Gang? I'm in a video and all, I'm standing well, right. I, I know, I know. I just, yeah. <laughs> I just have to ask for the public. Yeah. Okay. Well, I do my research, so, you know. Okay. Henji, I'm going to ask you, and please give me your honest answer. Mm -hmm. What song was better? There's different coasts. I mean, it was rapping the ass off in the East. Over here, we had different styles. You know, we had the commercial, the hardcore. But the East Coast was doing it raw. But what you think as far as lyrically, Just as far as o artists? O overall, if you were a, a rapper that came, I'm not a, a fan that came into a record store, and you go, let me hear that all in the same gang. I play it. Can you play Stop the Violence, you know, play it? But you could only buy one record. Which one would you buy? I'm West. I'm in. I'm on. Um, we all in the same gang. So <laughs> that better be the answer, down. right? Okay. I says, I says stop. I say bad joke. I'd rather jack another brother. Watch the gun smoke. I'm on that. So I'm yeah. West Coast. It's funny because I'm an East Coast cat, but I came and actually came in the early days of the West Coast and introduced the West to the East type type style music. Right. And, and you know, I seen the homie hand spitting bars on, on MTV raps back in the day. I don't know if you've seen that video, Trig. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, Big Hangy yeah, with the trig. bars I too, man. About that. MC Hangy, man, you know? Yeah, Hangy and Evil Lee, we had a record on Pendulum. Okay. All brothers. Okay, so. and, and we're still gonna get to the Latin pros. I haven't forgot, but I, I do wanna ask you that. But for me, when I first heard Stop the Violence, I was like, man, and then, so I was thankful enough to have been in the studio when Dre was playing the, I'm gonna play the beat for you. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the idea was, we got three guys from the Bay Area, it was too short, digital underground, uh -huh. and, and uh, he had told me, we're not sure about this guy, but we're, we don't know if we're gonna let him in or not. And I said, who's that? He goes, Hammer. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, but 
Yeah, he wasn't on there. Hammer was on there. Uh, was he? Yes, he was. Hammer was oh. the last one. He had the biggest record. Now, Hammer was before Easy, then his 357 girls okay, came. You know 357, then Hammer, then, then maybe, Easy. Hammer brung Easy out. Then maybe it wasn't Hammer that, that he had told me. Yeah. But I know Tusha was on there. No, 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 no. Tusha wasn't on there. No, then that's, that's him then. Yeah, Tusha wasn't that's on him. there. Yeah, because he told me that the three names that mm -hmm. were from the Bay Area, and they were thinking about not letting them in or whatever, but I think it was Too Short. And yeah. Dre, it's crazy because Dre's the guy that told me about Too Short when he dropped Freaky Tales. Wow. Yeah. And he goes like, this cat right here, you're going to be listening. To, he's going to blow up. Sure came out early. Yeah. yeah, but I don't know why he didn't put him on there. I thought that would have been dope. Hell yeah, that would have been know? dope. Because all those guys on there are legends, bro. All yeah. of those guys. Did you Underground was on there? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Pac wasn't even really happening at the time. You yeah. guys don't know he was that. Like the dancer still. He wasn't even involved. He would have been dancing on that note. <laughs> you know, he wasn't. It's true. You know, he was early um, digital, but not at that time. You would have seen him on there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I remember when uh, he dropped that verse on uh, same song oh, with man. Digital Underground. You know. He killed it. Yeah, he That's did. That's his introduction, right? That was his introduction right yeah. there. That's when he was wearing like the dashiki type shit or whatever. Like, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, okay. Exactly. And, and you know, I thought, at least in my opinion, he had an East Coast style. Yeah, he did. You know? Yeah. He did. Well, MC New York, right? That was his first he name. He was from the East, actually, I believe. Okay, I yeah. think Baltimore, if I'm correct. Yeah, yeah. His, his first rap name was MC New York. I don't even know that. That part I didn't even know. Yeah, bro. His, his first rap name was MC New York. You know, I did a record for him. One day at a time with Eminem and the Outlaws on his resurrection record. That I didn't even know, man. Yes, sir. I did See, it. you're 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 educating us, man, and I need that, bro. <laughs> yeah. Thank I did, you. I did it two mm -hmm. weeks prior to his death because I gave him like about a couple of songs. He picked eight. Then he went up to Ice T's house. We called the Crack House with the Outlaws. We did a record that Ice had the um, given his body count record at the time. So Pac did half of his verse. We was just chilling. They said I'll be back. He was doing the John Bellucci movie. And then mm -hmm. he passed two weeks after the fact, and I'm sitting here with s um, seven more songs, but I did a verse on one that Eminem remixed. I still got my credit and my production and my percentage and put the Outlaws on it. It came out on his Resurrection album. I was honored on that, but I was going to get nine songs out of him because he was just changing into leaving Death Row at the time, doing his own right. thing. So he was buying a house down the street from Ice and everything. So you can confirm that he was going to leave Death Row? Hey, yeah, he was preparing to be deaf, leave Death Row and get married to Quincy Jones' daughter. Wow. Yes, sir. It's always fucking sad, bro, when I hear stories like that, man, because, you know, it's it like a lot of happened. great artists like him. If I'm correct, he was 25 years old when he passed away. 25 years young. Yeah, and, uh, um, That's wild, and, and then right? you get Biggie, 20, 40 years old. It's crazy, ain't it? Yeah, and they're just kids, bro. My son, who's 31, has already outlived them, bro. And, and when I think about this, bro, they should none of those guys should have ever have been dead you know sad but it's really fucking sad bro i was definitely my worst enemy it's crazy man you're absolutely right man you know i remember when he called me I, I, bro look and i gotta pay my respect to easy because I, I would say this there's only two artists as crazy as this may sound and people may say oh, you're just a fucking groupie no i just love their music there's two people that i cried for when he passed away one of them was easy e and the other one was prince because i i, I love easy e bro and Prince, I just grew up with his music. I'd seen him in concert a couple of times. Never met the dude, but I knew Easy. I, I'm not gonna sit here and say I knew me Easy Evil like this, but I knew him good enough where I can go to the studio or, or he can come to my house and rap on my mixtapes. That's another one I seen two weeks prior to his death when I went to Tony G's house and we hung out, smoked a little bit outside, and two weeks after, he didn't look sick. He had a little cough and stuff, so it was some allegations and some crazy stuff that they said happened to him on his death, you know, that he just didn't die. You know, they were saying somebody killed him. They were saying so. Yeah. Mm. Infected him. I don't yeah, know if they're saying that. Injected but him. Injected him or something. But it was crazy. It just suddenly happened. We were just chilling. He just had a little cough. Yeah, that, that, that's the crazy part on how it happened, like, so quickly. Yeah. You know, and, yeah, that's. You you know, you, you're you aware of that, right, at the time. Yes. It, it wasn't no, no um, signs. He didn't have no crazy signs that he was sick or break, his body was breaking down. It just happened too quick. That's what the big homie Cocaine was saying, that he, could, he just had a little cough because, you know, Cocaine was ruthless and all that. Cough. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I, I, I met Cocaine at Audio Achievements, uh, uh, the studio where they would record, uh, I want to say Lawrence. it was probably 
Yeah, Torrance. <laughs> Torrance. Donovan, what's his name? Uh, uh, his name. Donovan. Donovan. Uh, uh, Michael Smith. <laughs> everybody, yeah. huh? Donovan. Right. Well, you see it at the end of WA yeah. movies. It's crazy. I took my son to um, when he was doing the um, radio station when Booyah was security and all that. Yeah. I took my son over there. And my son, I got a picture. I said, son, just relax. He's young. Like, like oh, I forgot, like six years old. He was crying. And there he goes, me, my son, and Easy taking a picture. And my son recognized who Easy was after the damn movie, the NWA movie. Oh, then he wow. asked for the picture. He said, Dad, now I get it. I said, you see, you can make a shirt out of this and stuff. It's easy was a good friend. Yeah. Icon. Good yeah. Dude. He didn't know at the time. Just like you're saying, your son, the, right. they're young. I'm going to share something with you when we go to break. Okay, everybody, we're going to go ahead and take a break. We're going to c- come back and talk more hip-hop once again with Henry and Namek and the motherfucking building. So make sure you call somebody, text somebody. You guys know the rest. We'll be back. Ten in minutes. Building.
Welcome back, everyone, to Rodian Radio, episode 259. And if you guys have been tuned in, you guys are tuned in to a treat. We got Henry, we got Namek in the motherfucking building, so we're going to go ahead and jump right back into it with them. So, Henry, once again, it's been, a, it's been a pleasure, man. I love talking rap, love talking all the elements of hip-hop, especially because you were there from the very beginning. Um, I wanted to ask you a question. Uh, when you guys first started touring with ICE, uh, who were some of the rappers, if any, that you wanted to meet? Like, do you like? I want to meet this guy, like Big Daddy Kane or somebody. I met them all, actually. <laughs> no, but but, but yeah, be, before, beforehand, yeah. Before, I mean, all of them, the, the icons, the forefathers before me, of course. I was honored to meet them. You know, of course, I met them. Right. Tony told me the other day. I was so oblivious that I kind of brung like Charlie Chase and Whip a Whip and all of them. Two K Day when we had our Saturday night mixes. So the and um, Bambada, Africa Bambada. I I forgot that totally. Back in the days right. Islam was running with us With the rhyme syndicate Of course you know that So he's one of the first ones Africa Islam Was rocking a jam On the other side of town Was a kid named Flash You know Islam right, <laughs> was, right. was with us He did a couple of IC records So You met Flash? Um, yeah I met Flash We met everybody actually I met everybody I mean I had to That was my mission It's my culture My lifestyle right. So when they come out here We were the first ones So we were the, those guys So when they came down <clears throat> They touched down And tapped in with us here, let, let, let me tap in with that shot glass. Let me. Oh, yes, I'm sir. not serving him. It would be uh, uh, very disrespectful if exactly. I didn't take that shot right here. Exactly. Now, uh, without naming any names, or unless you want to, but um, was there ever any artist that you met back then that right. might have looked up to but ended up saying, oh, that dude was a fucking asshole? I kind of liked everybody. Everybody had kind of like morals back in the days. Those that don't ain't like were that. really worthwhile talking about because they're not around no more. So yeah. it wasn't many because we did our stuff in, with the gangster mentality so a lot of people feared us they seen us on stage i'm six one evil six two ice is almost six feet so we look like giants on stage wearing all black so right. it was really cool we was talking to the community so we didn't have no beef we didn't have no problem there was no battle raps back in the days except when um cool mo d and then was battling um ll cool j and then ice jumped in and was battling la and that ll in that little era I don't know if you remember. Yes, of course. Of course. <laughs> yeah, so that was our like first kind of jump off on the battle thing. But other than that, it was, now, it was cool to everybody. Were those battles, were, were they serious beefs? Yeah, they were serious beefs. Okay. okay. Serious beefs. There's some things that happened in the Bronx that, you know, I'm not even going to mention. But, right. you know, we seen Al, Al seen us. It was cool. Zulu Nation calmed it down, Africa Bambada. But we did interact when we went to New York with LL. But it's cool now. LL and Ice love each other. That's dope. Hey, brothers. That's dope. That's dope. And the reason why I say that was real is because, um, oh, man, I know certain rappers today, sad to say, that start fake beefs. Yeah. Fake beef, they go at it because they're getting ready to drop records. Yeah. And then uh, they call me up and I, uh, interview us and bring peace between us. Yeah, it's it, corny. It, yes. I, I'm not going to be a part of that <laughs> shit. Be part of that shit. That's what's going on today, unfortunately. Yeah, motherfucking fake. Guys, fake Fake, fake fades. Policies. Fake yeah, fades. Yeah. Fake fades. That's crazy. You said fake fades. You know? Yeah. So, no, nah, that's crazy, though, for real, bro. Like, what the fuck? I don't, I don't get that. It has had been happening Call since the man. you know, for a long time, you know, in this industry. It happens. Yeah. These days, you know, people are literally, like, there's murder. So these guys are arguing for apparently no reason from one coast to the other, you know? So that's kind of crazy to me. So, yeah. I, I think guys today are more active online than on the streets. Oh, yeah. They're internet bangers, some of them. Yeah, yeah. Some yeah. of them are gang members that want to be famous, kind of like, you know, they're famous in the streets already, so they're respected, you know? It's, it's like I remember that. back in the day, a damn baller was looked like a damn celebrity. <laughs> he used to walk into the party, that's him right there, that's him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They had the money, you know. They love the, the culture, our culture. You know, yeah. if they didn't have any talent as far as, like, MCing or DJing, they always brought the VIP table next to the, where we was at, like, next to the artists, next to the DJ, so they can chill and show people that they got some money. They standing by those that got it popping. Did you ever meet Buffy from uh, um, uh, Fat Boys? Uh, my cousin lived in their projects in Brooklyn. Oh, yes, yeah, no sure. we was on tour with them and Lisa Lee back in the days. Wow. Yeah. Man, I, Fat I, Boys. They lived in Linden Projects in Brooklyn. East I still New have York. their. I, I don't have their VHS no more, but I bought the Disorderly's uh, uh, DVD. They, 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 they were making movies back then. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But uh, Crush Groove was the shit. Yeah, that was, yeah, Crush Groove. Oh, man. 
Yeah, memory lane, man. Those hip hop yeah, movies back the... in the days, boy, I tell you, man. And we can watch them forever now. Like, yes. you know, the same things that was back in the days and just respect the old radios that was in there that people didn't see of today's generation. The cassette tapes, the vinyl, the way we used to write on the wall, you know, just the culture. That was the disrespect that we had within the, yes. the city, but that was something for us to release stress. Yes. You know, so so that cr that crush groove show that that K Day throws is kind of just paying homage to that, or it has nothing to do with that no, at all. Not at all. No, no, not even close. Okay. Nothing. Uh, uh, okay, if you have one growing up as a kid, who was your favorite rapper? Thanks, Namit. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it depends on uh on what type of you know my, my age. It's range. rap. It's just rap, homie. You gotta ask him today's and yesterday's rapper, probably. Like if if I was like from 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 five to fifteen years old, my, junior my, high school. Junior high school, my favorite rapper was uh, Abstract Rude from Project Blow, who a lot of people probably don't know about who's watching right now, but Project Blow, like Two Mex. Okay. Like, you know, Two Mex is probably the I only- I interviewed him here. Yeah, Two Mex is probably the only Mexican, well, him and Cholo Lanzinco, two of the Mexicans from Project Blow. I, Cholo Lanzinco, I had interviewed him here too. Yeah, yeah, so, so, yeah. big homies right there, man. But Abstract Rude is from Project Blow, and he's probably one, he was my favorite rapper during that time. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, favorite rapper in junior high school, if you had one. Um, junior high school. Mm. By the way, salute to July second. Salute! I'll see salute. you there. See yes, you there. sir. Oh hell yeah! I'm gonna go then. If I, if I'm invited, I'm gonna go, brother. Invite you on the air. You're you said you never spoke to ice, so you okay. can take your flick. There we could is. talk shit and then do another interview after the show. Show the mm -hmm. B rolls. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Let's do this. That's a nice one. Junior so, high school? So reach up whenever you want. What's popping in junior high school? I was young. I'm a little older than young. Junior high school. I say high school, you know. Hmm. Curtis Blow was out junior high school. That's mine. You know what I mean? That's <laughs> mine right there. Thing. He's the first one that had that mainstream record out. Clap your hands, everybody. everybody you no. got what, what it, it takes. Because I'm Nami Nami. I want you to know that, that these, these are, are the breaks. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> KRS One rocked that too. Yes. Same intro. That was one of the first records that I learned how to scratch on. And you got to be tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck, bro. Curtis Blow was everything to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Them beats was banging. <laughs> Curtis Blow. Yeah, he set it off. He was the godfather. Christmas rap. I yeah. still bumped that motherfucker, bro. Yep. Every Christmas was, was the high. night before Christmas. <laughs> and oh. Uh, speaking of Christmas, I talk to every artist and I tell them they should make kind of songs that go kind of through the traditions. Like they got like a, seasons, like yeah, season, seasonal songs. It makes sense; they last forever. Yeah. You know, yes. tune oh, into my Carey, even though it got nothing to do with hip hop. But yeah, that's every, facts. Though. You know, that's facts. Though. Yeah. And then so. he came out with "If I Rule the World." That was that was on Crush Groove. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was on. Remember Crush that track? Groove. Yeah. Crazy man, where it slapped when it came in. Yeah, and then they got re. Pretty much redone again and made it that much more famous again. Right? Yeah, Cur Curtis Blow is one guy that I'd love to interview. I met him one time. I was at Peppers. I think is it off the sixty? Yes. Okay. Peppers was banging. I'm just. That's when Lewis had it. I don't remember who uh -oh. had it at the time, but I was there having a drink, and I won't say who I was with because I ain't talked to that fool anymore. And I turned around, and it was all Latinos during that time. It was like '98, somewhere mm -hmm. around there. Mm -hmm. And I see, like, no fucking way. I go, that's dude. I got like this. You know, that's Curtis Blow right there. And he's walking in. You know who's right behind him, bro? And I fuck, I get emotional. Even talking about it, Melly Mel. Ah, Mel. Walked in, and they were just walking around. We all had nice suits on. And I looked at him, and I grabbed Curtis by the arm, and I said, bro, you don't know who in the fuck I am, but I'm going to tell you a little story. Mm -hmm. And he turned around and looked at me, and I said, uh, growing up, you were my idol, man. I said, you were my idol. I used to ride on my manila peachy folder, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Curtis Blow, the king of rap. I said, you never knew that you were touching a kid all the way from New York that lived in the city of Wilmington. And I tell everybody, that's the best rapper in the world. And then here you are before me. I've never met you before. I just wanted to tell you, man, that, you know, thank you. You, you gave me something to look forward to every time I bought your records. And he was, he was just very humble. He didn't know what to say. He was just like, wow, man. He goes, wow, I don't even know what to say. And I said, and you too. I said, uh, we didn't call it gangster rap. We called it reality rap, I told him. Yeah. When you came with the message, yeah. and then the message Mel. too, yeah. and then survival, yeah. and then Scorpio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then he got to do a Shaka Khan. Shaka Khan. Shaka, Shaka, oh, Shaka. my God. He blew the fuck up on that one right there, yes. boy. Hey, for Did those of y'all who don't know what's up with this, it's hip-hop history <laughs> right here. Music history. Yeah, right and, here. and Chris the Glove Taylor was, was the, the DJ in that I video. I talked to Chris the other day. 
Oh, I interviewed him here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love that dude, man. That's Ice T's first DJ, Chris the Glove Taylor. They did Reckless together. R Reckless was another jam on Breaking One. Yes. Yeah. They was on um, Breaking and Entering, actually. Breaking and Entering as well. Yeah, him in Egypt and him was on the turntable. I was right on the side. I'm, I'm trying <laughs> to That's get Egypt radio. here, man. Yeah. I've, I've, been, I've been DMing him, and, you know, when I see him, he kind of remembers me, but, you know, but, yeah. I mean, Egypt... Okay. Got to pull some strings in, get him on here, man. This, this guy. Craft work. Yes. And then all of a sudden, boom, 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 boom. And then all of a sudden, another one. And I'm like, how many times am I going to breathe? But that shit was hard. <laughs> yeah, because the dance floor was, I mean, you know, he followed that era that was banging at yes. the time. Like I said, craft yes. work. Craft work. And, and uh, Soul Sonic Force. Soul Sonic Force. Man. Yes, those are the styles of music shit. he was rocking. Play at Your Own Risk is probably my favorite out of Planet Rock and all that. Yeah. They're all classics. Yeah. But Play at Your Own Risk. Scorpio. As soon as that shit kicks in, yeah. that, shit brings some, that shit brings tears to my eyes, bro. Because as a kid, you know, uh, I'm over here break dancing and shit like that, bro. It was hype. It was crazy. It was crazy. We was kind of drug free acting like we was on drugs. Exactly. <laughs> People used to look at us like they must be on drugs or something. Nah, exactly. music was our drug. Hip hop is our drug. Back then, if you knew how to bust windmills, you're going to get laid. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to get laid. Yeah, no doubt, man. <laughs> Sweaty and everything, man. Yep. Because not down. too many people in the early stages knew how to do windmills. Oh, and then yeah, they went to man. ball grabbers, you know. So, but those are the days. Would there ever be another era like that again? They're dancing now with everything that we came from put together to what's happening now. I see a lot of a lot of a little bit of what we come from right. with the new dances now. Look at in so, other countries too. Yeah. Like, you know, pretty much everybody's repeating it right, right. now. Yeah. And right. And they're breaking. The break is on countries. Olympics right now. Oh, dude, breaking oh, is coming up. That's one thing I will say. Okay. DJ got a little bit better. I still give the old school DJs a whole lot more credit because we had a vinyl and we had realistic mixers. We had a break in faders. Needles fucking busted. We didn't have you know, uh, needleless turntables. And we had the records that we had to carry. They gave us muscle. Like right now, yes. they carry a little briefcase with all the laptop and all the music in there. But we had the, the homie had to come pull up with us and take the crates out the back of the station. Yes, yes. That type of stuff. We had it tough like that. And then a, a, a fucking a MC, he, any fucking mic, just give me the mic. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, let's go. You know, okay. it, that was hip hop to us, you know. And then all we had, boop, 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 boop. Well, everybody uh, no, cares. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, man. I mean, it, it it was just it was just so dope back it then. It was fun. Yeah, I wish I was around, man. I wish I was around back then to really experience it because I I feel like I'm an old soul, so I know I would have got in perfect yeah, back yeah, then, bro. You know, yeah, would have been putting in major work, but yeah, we, 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 we doing soul, it the next man. generation. He's a young cat, old soul, man. <laughs> that's, that's dope. That's dope. You can make good music like that, man. Yeah. You know, uh, um, yes, yes. Um, Man, let me get out. Everybody says I live in the fucking past. Uh, maybe I do. Maybe I do. Wrong with it. But you know what? I just love, like the other day I, I was at the gym and I was bumping DMSR by Prince. Mm -hmm. uh, dance music, sex romance. Yeah, yeah. Prince is just. Dun, 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 dun. Exactly, bro. Yeah. Damn. I mean, that dude is just amazing to me. Another amazing cat. I'm a big fan, huge fan of James Brown. Oh, yeah, James Brown. That's, That's hip hop. Right. They don't yeah. know. James Brown, his sound is the one that we were using in early hip hop. If you don't believe me, ask oh, yeah. Eric B and Rakim. Yes, sir. Before <laughs> that too, his hey, all his everything. Yeah, ask the sounds. drummer. Shit, yeah. you know, most sampled drum patterns ever. Yep. James Brown's drummer, right? Exactly, exactly, bro. So, oh man, I don't even know where to go with this. Cause I just want to stay in the '80s. But anyways, <laughs> Namik, uh, once again, let's promote the show. Uh, oh, July 2nd, sure. let's talk a little bit more about it. Who's going to be on it for those that are just tuning in right uh, now? For sure, man. So July 2nd, we got it cracking with the OG Ice T, MC8 of Compton's Most Wanted. As well as your boy Namek. Maybe a couple little special surprises that I can't really give away yet, but it's going to be a, a beautiful show, man. Um, once again, Big Ups Droops are out the house productions. It's something that we've been trying to put together for a while now. Ice is available. Ice is excited. I'm excited. Eight's excited. I'm Hands excited. excited. You know, the whole team's excited. Final level, Art of Rap, Latino's excited. So uh, we really can't I'm wait I'm so for excited. Shit. And I just can't hide it. <laughs> Los Angeles <laughs> is excited because it's not like you see Ice-T every day. He's I working. know. Nah, for real, for yeah, real. He's been working for 20, I think probably 21 years. And he's the um, the longest brother on a show on TV. Man, Law & Order. Yeah. Law & Order. That's Ice-T. Wow. I'm even thinking, has Ice ever performed 
in Garden Grove or in Orange County in general? Oh yeah, you got body count. We've been around, man. We've been in Orange County. Been, shit. But in a while, nah, nah, it's been a long time. There's a lot of fr- friends from. It's been a long time. Tony Ace is the past right now. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Name that you. tune or something, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly, bro. I remember when I, when I first heard, uh, um, I got sold by uh, uh, Eric, Eric B and Rakim. I was like, hell yeah, I'ma bust this motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. You know, cause you know you got sold. Hey, that motherfucker right there, bro. You, you know it's crazy. I was playing Eric B and um, Rakim when I was on K Day on the um, J- on the mix, and Greg Max said it was too slow because they wanted the energy to be up during like like middays. You know, traffic track after work. Yeah. So, but he was saying Rakim rhymes kind of off a little bit. That's his style. And look at him now. See, I know. Greg did no. You know what I'm saying? He, yeah. he he was so original. Nobody understood when he first came to. The West Coast when we started playing him, he was rhyming slower than everybody else. But he was lyrical, extremely lyrical, yeah. very, very and street ghetto. Yes. So he was like one of those first cats that was using them. I mean, literature that a lot of other cats was afraid to use. You know, so there's a lot of rappers out there that did songs that we still play today or little phrases that nobody knows. For an example, pump up the volume, pump up the yeah, volume. Yeah, yeah. That's him. Yeah. You know, there's just a lot of, right, I thought yeah. I was a donut. He tried to glaze me. Everybody fucking says that. Everybody knows him for yeah. saying shit like that. He introduced it. Of course, everything came from the street, but the MCs are the one that introduced it to the world. Just like I said, what we did with Ice. We're like the first time, we weren't the first ones that really said it and made it up. We was the first one to introduce it to the world. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. That's what the mic, the mic control, the mic, the power of the microphone. Yes, the power of the microphone. <laughs> so, very true. Yes, sir. LA street scene, I'm going to look it up to find out what year, because that's when I went up to Ice-T. March 24th, 1988 was the last time I seen Ice-T. And then in the June 2nd, it'll be mm-hmm. my third time. That's crazy, bro. Like, that's one of my idols right there, bro. And we still um, here. A lot of people lost a lot of people. Yes. So right now, we got to do what we got to do. Reconnect, make it happen. Like, it's a new situation right now. So yeah. I'm honored yeah, to see y'all right now because we lost a lot of people during that that corona bullshit. Yeah. yeah. Oh, for yeah. real, man. So let's all take advantage of this show, man. And, and I still puts on a good show. We had one a couple months back at a Morongo Casino. Okay. Did, did an art of rap event right there with the... Rob Bass was there too, right? That day. Oh shit! Uh, they tore it up. It was pretty tight. Raz Kaz and King T came through, uh, but yeah, we were able to do a, a small opening set for him, and just to see him rock like that in, in front of the crowd, I was like, cool, man. Like I, I still got it. Dope, dope. Oh, fine. I want to rock right there. now. Hell yeah. yeah! Damn, that was Rob Bass. I remember we used to say that was like the number one crack song. I want to rock right now. <laughs> yeah, oh, <man. laughs> that dude. I would think that his records would never play out. They were so hot when they came in. Yeah. You ever thought about artists like that when they just come and then you hear their banger and you'd be like, yo, these guys are going to last forever. Forever, yeah. And his music does in our generation, but, you know, they got... It, it's hard. Jay, okay. it's, it's rare to find a Jay-Z. You know what I mean? Jay-Z made it a, bi- a real business. Got him a, a wifey and start buying shit. Billionaire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. Billionaire. You know, uh, um, right before Dre you, as well. I see. That. Yes. R- yeah. Right before you said, um, I God, I had something I wasn't going to drop on your lap, but damn it, I'll remember. And I have a photographic memory and I always be forgetting shit now. But, Namik, uh, your next single, when can people expect your next single or is it going to be the EP next? Uh, that, that's still in the works right now. I, okay. I, I really don't know exactly. Just know that there's going to be, no, no matter what it is, good quality music is coming your way. Right. Whether it's it done. be produced by Battle Cat or we, I have other shit like in the works with the homie Cowboy. Okay. You know, the, uh, you know he linked up with Han and, and Final Level Music and, you know, Cowboy's been coming in and I, I think we're going to be working on some stuff. Of course, I always have shit with my dog, you know, like M. Sick. The final level team is, is always going to be right there. We're always working on shit. Fetty so, and Daniel. Yeah, Fetty and Daniel, man. So, you sure. know, big up to the whole squad right there. So, okay. like, I, I really don't have a definite answer for that one, bro. But, okay. But we, we can, can, we're Okay, because we got about six more months to the year's over. So, yeah. 2023. Uh, maybe I should be asking you about his project, being his manager. Can we see a possible EP by the end of the year? Nah, summertime. You're going to hear summertime one coming out. Summer's around the corner, and now yeah. we got a lot of songs. We can't hold them back. Okay. And we're having a good time while we promote them. So, you know, there's a lot of shows, a sure. lot of blogs. You know, anybody that want to talk to Namek, what have you, let us know. You know, we check them out. You know, we're just having a good time pushing this music, a lifestyle. And That's even true. now, too, we're, we're digging into more like a sinking music to like uh, movies, movies, Netflix, yeah. video games, whatever it may be. Yeah. It's all Opp- about opportunities that, that are, a lot of us didn't have back then. No, nah, you know? for damn sure. We had no clue of. Yeah. 
there's a, a very big opportunity right now. Um, I'm going to just say possibility of late night TV if, if everything goes good, you know, possibility of well, being able to perform. When it goes good. When, when everything is locked in. We might be on one of them late night TV shows rocking at, at one of the end of them type shit, you know. It will be on. When you say late night, because back in the days, late night mean like some porno shit. No, <laughs> we're, 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 we're talking like some Jay Leno shit. Okay. Something like that, you know. James Corden. James Corden. Only the late fans. night show type shit. Yeah, I go only. <laughs> but big up to my dog, you know, my, my homie Chris holding it down from the Raider Ranch. He's actually the sound man for the James Corden show, the late, late show, James Corden. And he really likes my style. He was like, yo, we had a couple cancellations due to this COVID shit from bigger art or big bigger acts who perform at the end of the show. And he was like, yo, you, you doing your thing with Ice? You got your shit cracking with Battle Cat? We might be able to bring you on and then, uh, and rock out the end of the show, the late, late show. So we're just trying to put everything together right now and hopefully that ends up happening. My bad hand. When the shit ends up happening. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Ain't no hope. Yeah. Now I'm going to ask you another goofy question. I already know the answer, but I have to ask you. We have a mutual friend as well, Soren Baker. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Soren Baker, yeah. He's a uh, um, he wrote the book, a lot of books. He does yes. a lot of interviews. He's from back in the days. That's we the actually G right did there. A, a history history of hip hop, and um, I got my picture up in there. Did an interview. He he's cool. Icy's manager actually manages Soren George in the Shout out to George. What's up, big bro? So we yeah. working, man. Everything's connected. You know, if you talk shit back in the days, right now, I can't even mention your name. You know mm -hmm. how that works? Yeah. So I'm trying to tell today's generation, keep talking shit. In a couple of years, people ain't going to open the door for you. They're not going to answer your phone, answer your texts. So stay cool. Make it happen. You Respect know. will get you a long way, homies. Good energy, man. You have a problem with somebody, holler at them. Like, you know, yeah. holler at them. Th Settle that. Make it happen. Th three, whether you call them rules or three standards that I live by, and I try to preach this to a lot of the younger generation, you know, that approaches everything, how you approach someone. Okay. Mm -hmm. Second one is you only go as far as your attitude. The third would be you don't get a second chance to make a first impression. Mm. And you live by those three, especially being an artist, man. Uh, I've known people that I didn't like their their music, but I helped them anyway because I, I love their energy. People, yeah, yeah. You know, I, and I just said, look, bro, I'll just introduce you to somebody I know that, that can help you. Yeah. And I didn't have to make that connect, mm. but I know they were hungry. I just wasn't necessarily, it just wasn't for me. Yeah. So I passed them along and, they went out to do good things. You know, you know? it's crazy. That's cool. That's real cool, man. That's respectable. Um, there's a lot of stuff that I hear today that I realize, you know, doing a lot of listening to what's going on today. Some of this stuff really is not directed to us because their literature and their lyrics and everything talking to people in their age bracket. So our generation, some people usually listen to it and say, yo, that's just not hot, whatever, because they're not talking to us. As long as the beat is hot and stuff and they're rhyming and it makes sense, I kind of like it now more so. Okay. I kind of have more of an understanding. It's like Bea the Rapper. She's a young female Latina that works with Namek that we plan on doing a lot of things with her. When she's rapping, she I listen to it. And she's talking to her age bracket. Yeah. And she's rocking and she's flowing. We'll listen to her in a few more years, the literature, be, literature will be more advanced because she'll be a little older and be talking older. Yeah. So I, that's what I'm saying about a lot of today's rappers. If they got a flow, a cadence, I'm liking it. They might not even be talking to me. Right. You know, but the whack is whack. When you hear it, it sounds like ass. It just sounds like ass. You know I mean? We already know because we're beat, you know, we come from the beats. Yes. <laughs> yes. The beat world. Yes. Um, that era. That's what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> so I, I don't think I could have said that any better. Huh? <laughs> yeah, man. That'll work. That'll work. Anybody that you look forward to working with is like, is there like a, if I could do a song with this cat, you know, it, it, let, me, let me rephrase the question. This will be fun. Say that um, whether he, they're past or not, male or female, you could do a rap song with them. Whether they're alive or like I said, a deceased. Yeah. If you could do a rap song with them, give me three artists that you would do a rap song with. Game three. Mm. Well, it's a, uh, you were talking about earlier, the, the only two people, the only two artists you cried for was Easy e and Prince. I'll say the only artist I ever cried for when he passed away was Nate Dogg. And even though I'm doing music, I've done music with little Nate Dogg, yeah. who's the older brother, and baby Nate Dogg, who was in Hale, who's the, the little brother. But still, just to be able to do one with, with the great Nate Dogg, man, that, that would have been crazy, homie. So okay. I, would, I would say that's one right there for sure. Um, two would probably be Raphael Sadiq, even though he's not like hip-hop genre. Right, okay. I, I, I love Tony, Tony, Tony. Raphael Sadiq is like that dude to me. Lucy Pearl, you know, the, the, the first time that I, or the only time I ever met him was at a, uh, I opened up for Method Man and Red Man. 
And sh- I was like, what the fuck? That ain't Raphael Sadiq, bro. Nah. <laughs> they were like, the homie, I forgot who was next to me, but he was like, yeah, that's him right there. Whew, so that's the only time I got goosebumps, happen, homie, because I was like, damn, that's motherfucking Sadiq right there, homie. And for some reason, I just always was attracted to, to Tony, Tony, Tony and that style. Kind of had a little G-Funk influence and shit. So Nate Dogg, Tony, Tony, I'm a Nate Dogg, Raphael Sadiq. And the third one, I don't want to say DJ quick because that shit's already going to happen if I just fucking manifest that shit. So it's on, on some other shit. Um, I don't know, bro. Man, probably like a fucking maybe exhibit or corrupt, a real lyricist from the West, like that. Okay, something like that would be tight. That'll work. That'll yeah. work. Th- th- did you watch that uh, versus uh, uh, KRS versus Big Daddy Kane? Yeah, that shit was tight. Did you watch it? They was just rapping, having a good time. Yeah, you know, that's battle. all it was. That's all yeah, it was. Yeah. Big Daddy Kane. I mean, he's smooth operator. KRS One rocks the house. So yes. that battle should not have kind of like happened in a sense they were just having a good time doing what they do yes real quick let me take a rhymes back. and krs one oh that would have been a situation elder. that would have been you elder. know they would have been kind of like the energy level is different yeah yeah if i was to take something back real quick i would love to work with red man or meth okay that that would be it right napkin there or something, man, kinda hot. Yeah, yeah you know what can you uh, uh no can you get him a napkin and open up the door all the way please you guys leave it halfway i need it all the way yeah he'll get you one right now summertime coming up man about to be a fucking crazy one. <laughs> Damn. Work it. Record setting temperatures already. Exactly, shit. exactly. But uh, uh, um, you know, it's funny because right around around this time is when it starts getting hot up in this room. After like summer, we don't even turn on the air anymore. So just give it to him right there. Grab it, bro. I was hot on the way in. I'm, I got loosened up a little bit. That's for you, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's for you. I'm good. Uh, for me? Yeah, for uh, really. <laughs> All good. I'm okay. getting used to this shit now. I'm in the studio. Hours at a time, and it's kind of like this, Tony. So you know, I ain't gonna be on the camera and be like, "Damn, I should wipe my shit. Look like a mirror, man." You know what I mean? So, so you know what? Uh, let's quickly uh, uh, talk about the Latin pros. Who were the Latin pros, and when would that? When did that come out? Um, um, let me see. Latin pros like early two thousands. It was my cousins. We we're all you know family on Dureños. It was um, uh, myself, um, my cousin Junior, my cousin Marvin first. It was funny because we did the uh, MTV's The Cut with Lisa Left Eye as the judge. Wow. And, Man, um, I remember that yeah, shit. We did that. We came in second place because, you know, we what? had judges like KRS-One and everybody. The girls beat us because they girls. But, right. Um, yeah, we was flipping on stage, doing um, some bilingual stuff. Hey, and you got yeah. beat by a girl, man? Huh? You, you got beat by a girl? The girls, yeah. They, I mean, they like the girls. Like, we mean. rocked. They couldn't rock. Shout out to all the we niggas. We rocked. I was playing, like, you know, I'm the younger cat, you know what I'm saying? Right, I right. was kind of a little too enhanced to be on it, but I wanted to battle. And we went on there, met Lisa Left. I was pretty cool. We went on tours, the Watcher Tour. Watcher Tour is like an extension of the Warp Tour, but in Spanish, with Lafitte Benitez from Universal Latino. He put us on. Uh, he put us on because, not because of we running with ice and everything, because Johnny Laboriel, he's, um, he does novelas and everything in Honduras. He's rest in peace. He started Spanish rock. So your grandfathers probably know about it. You know, those that listen right. to it and your moms and stuff. Johnny Laboyel es mi tío. That's Johnny right. Laboyel. He did the novelas and the Spanish rock. Wow. So um, we did that. And we was famous. You know, we was rocking with Iria Curiaki, Molotov, you know, a lot of the Spanish rock bands, you know. Right, right. So it was, it was real cool. So that's the Latin Froze. We had a record on Pendulum, the same label as um, the Austin Twins and Shaquille O'Neal. Then 911 happened and fucked everything up. The money stopped. Wow. So, but in the between time, in the meantime, we just did a gang of shows. You know, a lot of the brothers got their cars watching sneakers clean and gummed out shows. We had, we was rapping to the mommies. So right. it was a lot of, the, you know, <laughs> a lot of ladies in the crowd. That's kind of rare today unless you're doing R&B. You know, these rappers right. want to just beat up each other. So, but I like the girls. You well, know, so. <laughs> being from Honduras, when's the last time you've been out there? I ain't been in a while. My cousin and went there. I'm kind of me with third world countries. I got a different mentality because they could kidnap your ass. You know what right. I mean? So, you know, if you're famous and going over there and you don't got the right security, you can get kidnapped because it's hard in these third world countries. So, yeah. I know a lot of people out there's family, but we're kind of successful on this side. So, when we go over there, we got to have more precaution and stuff because right. they look at us like we're billionaires because they see us on TV and YouTube with numbers. They see me sitting with you and Namek. They think we're doing Channel 7 in their mind. You know what I mean? <laughs> like Channel 11 or something. So, it's cool. But I, I love my motherland, my aunties, and everybody go there. But I gotta go over there. We got, you know, a lot of family. 
Right, you know, right. Us. They're here. There's a lot of us here too. Yeah, that's you know, dope. That's dope. Like, like arroz con pollo con platanos. You know what I mean? And yeah. Stuff like that. Mm. Hell yeah. We do. We do. So many caracol. That's us. You know. So. <laughs> <laughs> Look, 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 I'm going to say something to a lot of uh, Chicanos out there. Be careful talking Spanish in front of blacks because there's a <laughs> lot of blacks that talk Spanish. Okay. A lot of them say, Mr. Negro. Yeah, and don't even Mayate, realize. And my Mayate came big. Oh, you know what I'm saying? When I yeah. first came, I was like, okay, right. Okay. I understood. And then when you say, chinga tu madre culero. Like, oh, we. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I never paid attention to it. Even I understood it. It just made them look stupid because at yeah. the end of the day. And then, you know, there's uh, people got to understand a lot of the baseball players don't speak no goddamn English and they black. They like exactly. Wesley Snipes black, like my color type. They exactly. don't even speak English. <laughs> Cubans, Dominicans I mean, and stuff. Yeah. Puerto Ricanos. They, so Peruvians. We're, we're yeah, Peruvians. We're different. Latinos come in different forms, shapes and sizes. And, and colors. And colors is a lot of That's us. That's a beautiful thing, though. Yes, sir. Yeah. That's yes, a beautiful it thing. Okay, yes, brother, anything that I didn't ask you? Anything you want to promote? Anything you want to talk about? We got time, bro. So no, yeah, for sure, man. Just uh, nah, I, I appreciate just chopping up game with y'all right now. I feel like I'm in school right now, to be honest. And this is a, a big reason why I wanted to bring Hanji right here because I knew both of you guys are OGs. So I kind of felt like I'm Hanji's manager today, low key. You know, I was had I had to bring <laughs> Hanji up over here, to chop up game with you, and I'm just soaking it all in, dog. So you know, of, of course, you know, for everybody who doesn't know about me, though, man, like I've been doing this shit for a long ass time. As far as I'm concerned, being a, a 90s baby, you know, being a 90s baby, I've been doing it for a long time. And uh, yeah, man, I, I just want to thank everybody out there, homie, from the Project Blow, fr from the, the Chamber Records concept artist days, for those who really know me, to the Project Blow days, to the Cocaine Buddy Boy days, and to evolve into to the best in the business now with Big Hand G and Final Level Music, man, and the whole Ice-T thing. I can't be nothing but but very grateful for this shit, dog. You know, awesome, you know, awesome. Keep this shit rolling. You forgot to mention that he was a winner now on Power 106, the battle Friday night. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Technically, I'm, 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 I'm the defending Power 106 Freestyle Friday champion. They actually stopped that because uh, Nick Cannon took over Jay Cruz's spot. Jay Cruz went to, went over to 92-3 a couple uh, years back. But I'm technically still the... the is Nick Cannon power. still there? Nah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, you're not power no more? I was with him a few weeks ago. I don't know. I don't think so. Nick's doing too much, man. He's doing a lot of things. I don't think he's on power. Nick got okay. a lot of things. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But either hey, way, hey. you know, shout out Power 106 for the opportunity. We still out here marking MCs, man. Namik was also on um, 92.3, Real 92.3. Jay Cruz called them in regards to Namik did a, a, um, a, a tribute to Kobe Bryant. You can tell him more about that. Yeah. No, not for sure, dog. Um, well, be because Jay Cruz left Power 106, he kind of returned the favor. Him and uh, Jeff Garcia, uh, shout out Jeff Garcia, been around forever, man. He actually uh, called me and was like, hey, we didn't forget about you, brother. We knew you we, you won that Power 106 battle and everything. So how about, since we're right here at the new platform now, 92.3, you come on over and do that Kobe song. Because they, pre uh, they heard, uh, recently heard the Kobe song that I did and they were fucking with it, bro. So And he did it actually in rush hour. It's not like he came after hours or early morning. So I was excited about that. So the whole oh, Yeah, I wrote that shit the day he died, man. Yeah, th th that was another day that fucked up the whole world, bro. Literally yeah. fucked up the whole world. Bro, bro, let me tell you, I didn't know Kobe Bryant, but you grew up watching Kobe Bryant. He's in your living room every other day playing basketball. My, I raised my kids on Kobe Bryant. We all watched the Lakers, you know. Yeah, man. That's our team here, okay? That day when I heard that, he, pa I just laid in fucking bed all fucking day, bro. I couldn't get up. I was just like, I don't even know this. So, so it was a uh, weird-ass feeling, bro. Yeah, it was, bro. It was. It fucked up a lot of fucking people, bro. For, for someone, like like you said, for someone that you didn't know, this shit truly did feel like I knew the homie. You yeah. Know? So I had to write that song, get it out as soon as possible, and I, I really do feel like like it was like the spirit of the OG talent, like, like, hey, show this shit to, to 92.3, and, and let's get this homie on the radio so yeah, they can bro. hear this shit, because it's from the heart. Type you know, thing, I, I, I'm going to say this, and I know these are probably the wrong words, but I don't know what other words to use. It just happened to the wrong person. It ain't yeah. supposed to happen to nobody, bro. Thank you. You know, really. But, you know, at the time, you know, that was our Superman. Yeah. On the basketball court, he represented the the city real, real hard. I met Kobe at the gym a long time ago. I was shy to step to him. It was at um, Gold's Gym in Venice. I was with my man um, Strong. And 
It took me a minute. I, I got me a cassette tape with the Latin Fro's actually, and I wanted to give it to Kobe, knowing that he speaks five languages and he's hmm. married to a Latina. So wow. I, I gave it to him. How you doing, Kobe? What's up? I didn't want to get in his area too long. Then a few months after, he spoke to me in Spanish. Said his wife speaks Spanish. That he speaks it and he likes it in in Spanish. That was a highlight for me. That's a beautiful thing right there, man. Oh my God, man, Kobe, man. That's when he was young, Kobe. I think he used to date Brandy at the time. Mm. Oh, you had that thing cracking. <laughs> so, and he, even in, you know, rest in peace to his daughter too. No, and actually, everybody was, else. Yeah. He was dating his wife. Crazy. He had his wife. He told me his wife speaks Spanish. I don't want to get the stories wrong because right. this is recorded. I yeah, no, it's all good. So, it's all apologies. good. We understand. It's all good, man. Rest in peace, Kobe, and everybody else in that, in that yeah. accident. Man. Rest in peace, Kobe. Um, yeah, it's just fuck, man. It that it's just a fucked up story, bro. But, anyways, um, yeah. um, that's why time is so important, man. Yeah, we lost a lot of good ones, and all we have is the memories. So we got to make those for us, absolutely, and for our kids to see positive memories. Because every it's crazy on TV, they showing it's cool to be with the same sex. That's another subject, another show. But you know, I don't think everybody feels the same way seeing that on cartoons and everything. You know, and, and, and you know what? It, it's the truth, bro. You know, I've never seen anything pushed more on a society than what's happening right now. You know, uh, the sad part is that us talking about it can get us shut down. I was just about to say, like, you know, we can talk about that when the mics are off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. They'll off. be sending you some hate letters and stuff. But, yes. you know, people, it's another thing. We can't even say what we really feel right now because people will take it to the next level on whatever the mentality, the way that they're taking it in their heads. Yeah. So, See, our, 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 if I'm correct, our First Amendment is freedom of speech. Yeah. Okay. They're taking but, that away. No, that's taken away now because you have, uh, in the name of, you offended me. So mm -hmm. now you can't even have freedom of speech because you offend people. So uh, I like to say this. We live in a generation that nobody gives a fuck, but it's easily offended. Verbal abuse. They made that a law. We used to call that a rap. Like, we verbally abuse you with the <laughs> lyrics. Now right. they make it. You could have a case. Yeah, 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 know? exactly. But back in the day when we used to bag on each other, yeah. fuck you, your fucking mom's so fucking fat, blah, blah, blah. Now it's like, ever since she said my mom was fat, I've never been the same. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's why Henry's like hey you gotta get back on that battle rap tip and kill these MC I'm like nah man they, they could get offended bro. Nah, they could get offended stand, like, it's yeah. an arena with battle rappers you know so. hey some of them get offended man they yeah, get it, it, no, but keeping it real is a thing of the past unfortunately man yeah, just keep know? it real they ain't keeping it real yeah, motherfucker yeah, it's like, you know so <laughs> <laughs> anyway, study your lessons, man. There's there's what they call codes to the game. Once you study the codes from those that been there before, then you be more so on point than you are when watching these blogs with these new cats on there that studied where we came from. All due respect, but that's a no, fact. So. And it's better to get out there and actually experience it. You know, kind of like printing up flyers instead of just posting the motherfuckers on social media. It's With like, your fake it's, followers. It, it, it's, yeah. it's really footwork still, yeah, exactly. in other words. They know? better have a business mentality because everything's about, like, big record companies are little small rooms now with a laptop. Yeah. You know, the overhead is less and you got to have more knowledgeable people around you yes. to make your brand work. I mean, it's different than before. We just used to have to go rock parties and give it to our DJ friends. Now the yeah. DJs now, I'm, I mean, I, I don't know what to say, man. Uh, Henji, if I were to have you hand you a cassette and I told you, make me a mixtape, man. What five artists come to your mind that you're going to put on? Either artists or groups. Besides Namek and, and, and Final Level? Talking about just generally? In, in general, it could be old school, new school, whatever. What five artists will come to your mind fast? Quick. I play Cameo, you know what I'm saying? I like that um, Cameo. I'll play uh, I So Fine, you know, back in the day, So Fine. I'll play um, anything King T, that voice on his era, you know what I'm saying? I'll play um, 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 Pac, um, you said five, and I'll play um, Namek, six. Just it's five, right? Five, yeah. Hey, speaking of King T, though, just if, if we're talking hip-hop, a lot of people probably don't know that. That Biggie was very inspired by King T and his style and his voice, right? Yeah, yeah. that's that's some very, that's dope, very bro. dope right there too. You know, I'm feeling like the fool. Yeah. Oh my God, I'm just clowning. Yeah. <laughs> we went on tour with King T. George used to manage King T as well. So that's another classic gangster album, the Act the Fool album. Yeah. He's walking with that. Uh, he was uh, acting the a gauge. fool. He was acting a fool. Yeah. The pool did that, right? Yeah. Yeah. He was acting. Oh, pool's. A, see, everybody just knows pool as red. <laughs> I know, right? My grandma give me that chain. That's no, it. dude, they don't realize that he was transforming on records. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Uh, what was it? 
can't walk down the street. Or, 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 can't walk. my gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, was yeah. doing all that shit, bro. And he did the same. Him and Teela did. I think that they was hot the time you seen them at the um, Orange County show doing the St. Eyes commercials. The St. The St. Eyes commercials. They fucking was doing classic. commercials, man. You yes. know? St. Eyes commercials. St. Eyes commercials was like records. They yeah. still got that beer out there? Yeah, DJ Poole, uh, uh, matter of That's fact, he had a cape on. Remember he was flying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, uh, who's the Mac with Ice Cube? Yeah, and yeah. he's over here dancing like Hammer and shit? Yeah, Poole was funny. That, Poole that, was a co-writer of Fridays. Yes. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, yes. Poole did a lot. Now, he's doing a lot of these NFTs and these um, 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 cartoons and stuff like that, the black cartoons and stuff. He did a lot of the music and the characters. So he's transformed and... Uh, hip hop, you know, hip hop was what you know make him feed his family right now. Just like a lot of us, you know, right. hip hop is nothing to be played with. Let's have some fun and you know introduce that's what, it to the world. That's what I like, really like with Hand too. He always mentions the having fun part of the shit. No, you know, for us, let's be honest. In the beginning, for me, rap was fun, bro. Yeah, rap was fun. There was a handful of us. Yes, and <laughs> and then it just got fucking serious. Motherfuckers are now dying. You know, yeah. and it was not like that, bro. Yeah, it was not like that. It was real beefs. If you had beefs, and they just handled it accordingly, they don't just yeah. like you know talk crazy and just kill a fool. We didn't do that. It had to be some some a, a reason, right? See, know? today, you know what people say? Uh, uh, it is what it is. You know what we had back then? It's like that, yeah. and that's the way it yeah. is. <laughs> so we had that before you kids. You guys just put a new rapper on it. You know. But hey. anyways, uh, Henji, once again, it's truly a pleasure, you know. Um, thank you. Appreciate you, no, bro. Ah. Thank you, my brother. Yeah, we're not getting that thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for coming through. You, uh, you give your shout-outs. I don't know if you want to give any more. If not, give your shout-outs, and we're out of here. I'd like to give the shout-outs to everybody that support what we got going on and all the people that's listening to the details that we got going on, too, because this is a lot of game for you. We don't know everything, but we've been there in the forefront, so shout-out to all of you. I got too much names to mention, so none of y'all can get mad because I said all of y'all. <laughs> shout-out to all of y'all out there. Respect, stay positive, y'all. It's all about. And, yeah, man, just real quick. Anybody that, that's been working with me, we've been breaking bread together, whether it be custom songs, shows, music videos, whatever. I appreciate y'all. Let's keep this grind going strong. Final level, Art of Rap. Let's go. Art of Rap, July 2nd, and I will be there. That's Art of Rap Latino. Art of Rap Latino. Art of Rap Latino. Rap Latino. It's, it's, really, it's really the original gangster party, but, you know, yeah. we're pushing the Art of Rap Latino. Really awesome. hard. So those of y'all that want to get down, you know, final level music on the gram or Namic six two six. Yes, sir. Or you can call Tony A. We all family. We've been family for a long time. Absolutely. Didn't know it, but that's what it is. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna give him a couple of shout outs once again. Alex Cervantes, Cervantes Enterprise, Norbert. Once, once again, he's uh, um, part of Rolling Radio, right. the Hip Hop Jedi, and uh, my son Lee Scalis, and the Churro Lady. Uh, uh, you know what? I gotta give her a quick shout out. Get, one, yeah, hold yeah. on. Let me give her a quick. Once again, it's called Comadres y Mas. Comadres underscore E, which is Y, underscore Mas. Comadres y Mas, follow them. Uh, they're the ones that bless us with the churros. If you guys want some churros, they'll go to your pad and they'll, they'll hook it up for you. It's dope. Yeah, ain't got no voice. Yeah, done. exactly. Then I'm going to give a shout out once again to Erica for b, &B Entertainment. It's holding it down. Yes, holding Except it down. Erica. And uh, once again, Saturday, 6 p.m., I'll be on American Cholo and... Uh, um, like I said, I'm gonna. She's about to change, so I gotta clear the air and I gotta um, share some shit that. Um, so you guys like cheese, man? Um, come on through. So once again, 6 p.m. I'll be right there. Carnal, we out of here. Salud. Stay blessed. Salud, everyone. See you guys Saturday and Friday. Freaky tales. We July 2nd, y'all. Saturday, July 2nd, the original gangster party. Ice T, MC8, Namek. Put the flyer up. The rest up. of the family, y'all. Put the flyer up, yep. Final level music. Call somebody, text somebody, slap the shit out of somebody.
Let them know that Rodian Radio is live up in this biatch. Got it. 